threatening phone call to him. And when they asked him, he said, no, it wasn't threatening. It was a very nice call. He could have played to the to the bandwagon. He didn't do that. He told the truth. So I like Zelensky, but that war's got to end. We can make a deal on that war. One of the things we're going to do is we're going to get that war ended. That war is a disaster. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people are being killed, far more than you're reading about. And you notice you don't hear about that war anymore. You know why? Because they're not doing well. That's why. Because the fake news is totally bought in. And now they're saying this is not working out. No, we got to get that war settled and I'll get it settled. It would have never happened with Putin. It would have never happened. And it, and by the way, it didn't happen for four years. It didn't happen. We'll get it settled. But we're fighting for the people of our country. We're going to stop that war. We're going to stop other wars that are happening. But when you think of what took place in Israel just a short while ago, would have never happened. Even the Democrats were on television the other day, Deface the Nation. Did you ever watch the show Deface? Ladies and gentlemen, it's Donald Trump on Deface the Nation. No, def I think it was Deface the Nation. They're all sort of the same, all very radical and crazy. But they were saying that, now, one thing I will admit, if Trump were president, you wouldn't have had Israel, you wouldn't have had Ukraine attacked, and you wouldn't have had inflation. Other than that, but we're going to drain the swamp. We started off, we fired Comey, that fraud. We got rid of that guy and we got rid of a lot of others. And then uh, we had COVID came in and uh, that we had the greatest economy in history, even for right, four years. The greatest economy, off. but just prior to COVID, we had, even for four years. Um, waiting for him to call in. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, let's just see. Let's just see. Let's see. Is this it? Oh, here it is. You're not my mother, though you claim to be. Don't call me fire, baby. It's really creepy. Don't you understand what difference things? You are a human and I'm a doggy. You're just a dum 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 dum. You're not my mother, though you claim to be. Don't call me fire, baby. It's really creepy. Don't you understand what difference? You are a human, and I'm a doggy. You're just a dum 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 dum. Um. All right. You're not my mommy. No, you're not my mother. I forget it already. Though you claim to be, I'm not your fur baby. That's really creepy. Um, GDHG, GDHG, distraction. Seems to be the action. Distraction seems to be the action. We're just waiting for him. Um, I spent, I'm a little late going on from when Ham wanted me to go on. I spent the last uh, couple of days looking at a um, gold deal, which is private, not public. And uh, I mean, nothing's without risk, but I think it's a <laughs> if if these numbers are correct, um, they they need to raise money to build their pilot plant. That's what they need. They need to raise four or five million 
it's unclear which. The document says four, the company says five. So anyway, to uh, build their plant and rebuild their laboratory, because there was an earthquake out there. And then um, a couple of overhead items. And they can be producing gold in a pilot plant by July slash August. Maybe the plant will be finished by July. And then they've got to start producing uh, gold. Um, so maybe by, I don't know, October, November, December, it's proven. It's proven. And just jumping to the upside, there could be 100 million ounces of gold in a new area. And, uh, you know, they're raising money at essentially, it, you know, it'll, it's always will be negotiated. It, but they're, they're raising it, their proposal is uh, somewhat under 10 cents a share and uh based on the shares outstanding everything i can see it should go to four four dollars five dollars but it could go to 25 dollars in a buyout that's what they do they sell it they'll just sell it to a major Anyway, I've been intrigued by it, so it's distracting me. And I have to work on it quickly. Otherwise, um, it's kind of a filler kill. Two, two, um, two weeks or so to, get, to give an indication. Anyway, they want to meet, they want to set up meetings with investors in lost wages. Of all places, that seems to be where I'm gonna I'm gonna end up in Las Vegas. All right, NSTG twenty four cents, four hundred and sixteen million shares. God, Mark, you you have a lot of good ideas. Marlon Mundo, hey Eddie Eagle. Why don't we sway just a little bit longer? Please, please sway. Hey, Steve. Chat and work. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's your bolt of electricity Saturday afternoon. Um, William, you there? Yeah, we're here. Everyone's waiting for their jolt of energy from the ham. I went out. I just came back from the uh, dispensary. I went and bought some pot gummies so I could uh, so I could drift into space tonight. Anyway, let's rock and roll here. All right, so I got banned from Twitter for six days. I'm in the penalty box. I I posted something about New York City, the shooting in Times Square, and I said, people, be careful going to Times Square because you may be shot. And the guy, some woman was shot in Times Square. And Twitter banned me because I guess I said the word shot. I I, I appealed it. and wait for them to get back to me. And uh, I, I guess they don't read my other posts. I curse everybody out every day. <laughs> but... Because I address, I told them I addressed the story. The story was right there, and they kicked me off for six days. I can't do anything about it. Marge, Marge shot used to own the Reds. I would, she would have had a hard time. On, right, you, on you, she would never been on Twitter. I just said that. <laughs> I just said the story. Said the woman was shot by a by a Venezuelan teen. I, so I told the people on Twitter, I can't even spell Venezuela. Are you kidding me? I got this wrong. Anyway, that's what happened to me. If you want to know, uh, I, I got kicked off for six days and five hours, whatever it is. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to address a few things. I'll start out by talking about this company. I, I, I just told Busy Brands. I told him the story. I had him on the phone with my friend who told me the story of a company, 
uh, it was an IPO. Guy bought the whole IPO. One million shares at seven bucks. The guy bought the whole thing. When the company goes public, the brokerage firm that brings it public looks for shareholders. This guy says, I want the whole thing. So the firm sold him the whole thing and they make a market in it and starts trading. That's it. If he's he's welcome to sell it, he can do whatever you like, but he's basically the market. The stock opened yesterday at 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 46 a.m. New York time. I wasn't even around. My friend calls me up. He said, you see what they're doing? I'm like, to what? I don't even know what he's talking about. That stock, it's as simple as Tom, Eddie, Larry, Oscar. I put it up on Twitter. In two hours, they knocked it down from $7 to below five. They naked shorted over 200,000 shares in the first 20 minutes of existence. I put it up. I, I contact, contacted the SEC, the FBI, the DOJ, Charlie Payne. I said to everyone, I just sent Charlie Payne a, a personal email. He has to do this story. This, it's, it, this, this, the company was two hours old and they knocked it down 30%. With no shares. The guy owns all the shares. So I'm not telling people to buy the stock. I'm telling you, I'm alerting to you what these guys do. This You can't win with these type of actions. And what I'm seeing is desperation by the criminals all over the place. Because no matter what stock we look at, they all go in the same way, down. The only stocks that go up in NVIDIA, Apple, Microsoft, or whatever, or Facebook, or whatever it may be. Every other stock is attacked. The company doesn't even have a news out. There's a, uh, 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 a website that they got there, what they do. It's up there. I put the link of it up there. And that's and they knocked it down based on that. They know nothing about it. It's impossible. No one knows anything about it. And they knocked it down within minutes using the market maker exemption, the loophole, which is supposed to add liquidity to the market. They used it to their advantage and they just flood the market with counterfeits. That's all they did. And that is... This is something I'm trying to teach you about because think how hard it is to win when you see things like this happening. I have no interest in it at all. I could care less either way. But now you can see what I'm talking about. All right. I, and I spoke with Busy and everybody's saying the same thing, that this is out of control, what's going on. No one, so the SEC is not helping us. You got to remember, this is a political hand grenade for the SEC. How would they like to go to the Senate and Congress and tell them, hey, the whole market's full of counterfeits and uh, we, we don't know how to stop it? And it's get, it's getting exposed. And everyone, like that guy Don Finn is running around reaching and educating everyone. And William, I've always said education is the key, correct? Education right. is the key unless you're, so this, well, unless you're not all that bright. This, well, I'm not that bright, but learning this stuff, you learn after a while, you're saying, okay, this is impossible, what's going on? Every time there's a big buyer, there's a bigger seller. You buy it, they sell it. You buy 5,000, they have 5,000, one share for sale. It's always matched perfectly, and it's always negative. It's impossible for, for every seller and buyer to meet at the same time, and you can see that in stocks that trade 30 million shares a day. They trade 300,000 one day. The next day, they trade 30 million shares. It's impossible. You know, so again. Well, let me ask you here, something. Could it just be algorithmic trading back and forth? A, yes, it could be. But it's still but counterfeit, they, right? Oh, no, they, they have a machine. that They have a counterfeiting machine. But in a small stock like the one that just traded yesterday, there's no algorithm tried to this thing. That's That's complete chaos by and i'm told the orders came out of canada i'm sure canaccord has a gateway to the what they do is they give the orders to canaccord canaccord floods them off in different directions and they create the illusion there's 50 sellers and they use the same places all the time again the orders were coming from offshore through canada i'm sure the broker firm that brought it public had a good feeling about what was going on they're not that stupid is so, there a requirement if one seller sells more than 4.9 percent, implying they own more than 4.9 yeah, yeah, percent, are to. they supposed to disclose their ownership? I'm sure there has to be disclosures, right? But the stock is the stock wasn't an hour old. I know, I know. <laughs> Why would you pay seven and sell it at five? Yeah, exactly. I hold on, I want to give you seven million dollars. Thursday morning at nine o'clock and 11 o'clock, I want you to give me back five. That's what happened. 
Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know anybody who does that. All right, Elon Musk wouldn't even do that with all his billions and trillions of dollars, whatever he has. But listen, as long as you understand, is every day the crime has a different look, and that was yesterday's look. Everything else that we see trading has the same pattern. Z-I-J-L, there's no shares. They got zillions to lend out all of a sudden. Just so you think, think to yourself, if anyone bought the shares, when it was $300, and it was $300 twice since we were talking about it, no one was selling. It was barely trading 5,000 shares a day, 6,000 back and forth. But it was high as 300. Yesterday, it closed at what, eight or seven? Seven times 20 is $140, right? Yeah. If they weren't selling it at 300, what's the rush to sell it at 140? Because no one we know controls enough shares to make that happen. No. Yeah. And yesterday it traded 1.7 million shares, right? It traded yeah. 1.7 million shares. Who owned all the shares? Nobody owned all the shares. Yeah. So again, where did all the volume come from? It's the it's the bandits going back and forth. I spoke to a friend in Sarasota a few minutes ago. He bought, I think he said 18,000 shares yesterday below, below, I think he said maybe below seven or eight. I can't remember, but you know, people are stepping in. So I guess the company now has met the requirement required by NASDAQ to have 300 shareholders, right? 300, right? One, one lot shareholders, you know, 100 shares are better. No, you have to have 100, you have to own 100 shares in order to uh, meet the requirement. That's my understanding, yes. Right. So I'm sure the company has now met the NASDAQ requirement, and that's why they did the forward split. So that's off the table now. So what's next? Where's all the selling coming from? You know, I expect that. My gut feeling is that that's going to turn, and it's going to rip the other way. All right? So, again, I, I would, you know, if you are long, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't panic. You know, these are bear raids. You can see it. It's obvious. Call from Mike Lucci. See what happened to the forward split? It opened, it went, I, in the morning I reported it at $16 pre-market. Someone told me before I reported it, it went as high as 50. That's equivalent to $1,000. Right. That was in pre-market trading. I wasn't, I didn't see it, but that's what I was told. People posted it on Twitter. So a forward split does have a positive event. So that's what you needed. That's what I came out of this with. All right. After that, we saw the fraud take over and the bandits trying to get out of it. So there you go. Uh, you know, zero, uh, interactive brokers are still uh, offering zillions of shares. I think they had 10 million to lend out the other day. 10 million. I mean, so it's, it's hard to believe that you can see it. I talk about different stocks because the crime has different, it has different faces every day. It changes. That was a forward split. This was an IPO, right? You're learning it all, correct, William? I think we are. I think. And if I didn't speak about it, we'd all be standing with our finger up our ass, doing nothing, watching one stock. If you don't, if you didn't speak about it, they'd all be blaming CEOs and you for the stocks going down. Right. <laughs> and well, me. Again, no, and me. You can blame me all you want. I don't care. But anyway, <laughs> this is what's going on. You can see it in different different symbols. What is going on? I don't have the money. I told you before, I'm not fidelity management. I can't play all these stocks, but I can talk about them. You're allowed to talk about them. And if that's a crime, then you got to hang up the phone and say, I don't want to hear about stocks. You, you got to learn. If you want to learn, this is how you learn. You saw a forward split and you just saw an IPO just got destroyed over naked short selling. Forget the past. The best, the past is Lynn partners, toxic lenders. The uh, cream is toxic lenders. Here's a great thing. I spoke with Richard and not legal advice about this earlier. Alpine. Alpine didn't have money to meet the margin requirements, right? They were free riding on their positions, on their short positions. How in the hell did they have enough money to pay for legal bills where they're going to lose the case no matter how much money they spent? They're obviously spending money for a reason to hide and move trades or assets so they're not so that they can get them away from the government because otherwise why would you waste money on doing this they probably spent more money on lawyers trying to drag this case out 
And for what reason, I don't know. If they did win the case against the government, who's going to do business with them? Because you know they're going to be investigated by the government forever, whatever they're doing anyway, because the government's going to be pissed off at them. So what are they fighting for? They're fighting for one reason is to hide assets, trades, whatever, money, whatever they're doing. That's the only reason they could be doing it. And whoever they're hiding it from, obviously Alpine's tied to the Kramers. Lynn Partners, completely different beast. Let's go down that road for a second. Now that we're moving fast now, William, we're going downhill. You ready? I went and looked up the date that, uh, that uh, Finger Motion announced the deal with Lynn Partners was August 10th. I forgot the price of the stock. I apologize. I'm playing for a second. But we have to go back. When did the company Finger Motion call up Benchmark? That's when the stock started going down. It was going down, and I remember it like it was yesterday because I was screaming, saying, who the hell is selling the stock from four down and breaking it and selling it as low as it can? And every time we fought back, I had friends that we were buying it, trying to you know, go back the other way, take out the seller. It just got stronger and stronger, and they just kept attacking it. So it was a, it was a four to five months. Slow, slow attack, and then it picked up steam. And then when the company announced the deal, that's when they really went for it, driving it down to below a dollar. And that so money that, that the criminals took is what they used to fund the four million dollar note, four point oh, two million yeah, they, or they whatever. Just, they just use our money. Yeah, they, they, they money. don't raise money. They just take. For CEOs listing, they just take your own money. They take it right out right. of the market by osmosis while they destroy your market cap. Right. All they're looking for, all they're looking for is what? They're looking for one thing. Hold on a second. Market cap to steal? Volume? No. Of trading? Is. Volume of no. trading well, with market well, cap to steal. All they want, right, all they're looking for is what, how much volume you trade. That's the only parameter you need. You could go in there with a company and have a bag of shit trading a million shares a day. We'll lend you money. That's all they care about. That's the only thing they care about. You got, you have, you have no business, no nothing, no problem. We'll give you money. You have volume, we'll give you money. That's the only parameter. Think about that. Companies that get money like CELU, the, uh, they work on infectious disease. You know, I spoke with my friend who introduced me to that company. He couldn't believe that they didn't listen to me and they went to Yorkville. They just got destroyed, their market cap, everything about the company has been destroyed. And now Yorkville has them on a, uh, what do you call it, a morphine drip. Where they, need to go back to, they need to go back to them the whole time. You, you need us, you're on crack. Come back to us. We'll give you more money. That's all it is. That's and we'll it. keep destroying your stock. You keep making those statements how wonderful your drug is going to be. And we'll keep killing it. We'll give you our own drug. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, so I forgot what I was saying. So anyway, the, I went back in time, looked at the date. What we all, anyone needs to know is, when is the day, what day did the company call up Benchmark? Whoever introduced Benchmark, whoever gave the company Benchmark's name, that game was in play already. So the day someone called up, whoever gave finger motion and said, call Benchmark up, that once Benchmark got the call and said, I think I got a client for you, whoever that person was, I don't know who it is. That day, Benchmark got the call. They called Lynn up. And they start shorting it. There you go. That's it. Once once they know you need money. So a good business plan would be, if anybody wants to get involved in that, is have your friends call up a benchmark, tell them you need money. As they start shorting it, you buy the shit out of it. And then when ben, they go to introduce you to Lynn, you turn down the money and say, ah, we don't need any money. Now you got them short. That's how stupid these guys are. You can do it yourself. Create your own short squeeze. If the SEC is listening, that's how easy it is. You can trap these guys because they they trap themselves. You could sit there and say, well, it's illegal to 
orchestrate a short squeeze. What orchestrate? These guys jumped right in. They jumped right in the net. They're like a bunch of fucking rats. They jumped right in the jumped right in the trap themselves. William, am I still with you, William? You are. You have a gentleman, John Waddell, who will loan his Twitter account to you for six days. <laughs> I appreciate it. I, I think it's like crack for me. I, I need to take a break because last night I was sitting there and I'm reading everybody's post and I can't say anything. It's like, I, you know, I might as well put a sock in my mouth. <laughs> you're, you're not used to not talking. Yeah, I was walking around in circles. <laughs> and when I and when I get and when I get crazy like that, I last night I think between six and twelve o'clock I took three showers to go relax. Because I couldn't watch any more television. I couldn't talk to anybody. My family my family hates me, so that that's all I talk about is this nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, no one wants this to end more than me. I need I need to get off. I have a it. picture of you on your deathbed in 25 years. It's going to squeeze, but it's very <laughs> <laughs> I can't I go know yet. This is the one. <laughs> oh, Listen, okay. I'm telling you, this is my opinion on it. This is coming to a head. The criminals are so brazen that they're trying to this is something's going on because it's just so brazen. It, every stock is under attack. It's very rare that a stock breaks the other way, like rum. I don't know where that closed at, but it went from it went from eleven to three twenty, three thirty when I spoke at the CEO. It was turned, and now it's eight plus. So I mean, it's just a matter of time before the longs run out of money buying it or the shorts covering, and they'll attack it again. So you know, it, unless the system changes, unless he's got something going on, but you know, sometimes they break and they just go from eight to eighty, or the momentum stops and whoop, they start the game over again. Do you know the stock NSTG or the stock SYRA? No, I do not. All right. Uh, this guy who is the, the father of Celeste, he follows a lot of stocks. He thinks those two stocks, NSTG and SYRA, are going to run next week. Um, all right, Anthony Harms. Anthony Harms also offers his account to you for six weeks. You can hop. Do you, do you, six days, six days. Six days. Yeah. Well, <laughs> with your talent, so, it might turn out. So, so, someone said to me that I forget how many, I think I put up 26,000 posts on Twitter in a year. 26,000. It's almost like an average. What was William? We talked about this. What was it? Eighty a day, some crazy number. Do you know? I never once looked. I'm just saying that. That's. I, mean, I always read your <laughs> posts. And if you if you said to me, how many different stocks have I talked about? I would say maybe twenty out of twenty six thousand. I mentioned so maybe Apple and Nvidia or something like that. But for the most part, it's been the same stocks over and over and over again for years. No wonder your wife is tired of you. Um, oh, they fine. You, you know, guys, you don't realize sometimes I have a conference call. I'm actually driving to the doctor's office or something, and my family's in the car, and they're all trying to jump out. <laughs> <laughs> and when I hang up, they go, these people actually listening to you? I go, yeah. And they go, just the same thing? I said, every day, the same thing. Um, and I say that, you know what? There could be one new person on here that may want to hear it. It doesn't understand it. And if I can get to them where we, I told you we saved some woman, uh, Lou from Brooklyn, saved some woman that wanted to put money in the marketplace and buy a few speculative stocks. And he stopped her and tried to get and tell her to go buy a condo. She'll, uh, she'll never lose it. You know, so to me, I thought that was a great thing. Does T E L O T L O does it have the possibility for a squeeze play? If you said to me, what do I think? I say absolutely. That's what he said. Just go listen, the conversation started like this. I took the COVID shot because of my my son. I had to take the shots. By the way, everyone on this channel follows the science. 
We love the science. Okay, come on. Well, I took this shot because the doctors advised us to take it. It was just me and my wife and my son. Yeah. He had a medical issue. We had to take it. Yeah. But over the time, we're reading everything. I'm super concerned about the metals and the and the strokes and the heart conditions from everybody. So I was, you know, driving and William, I introduced you to the gentleman. And he, I showed him, uh, you know, uh, someone's blood with the metal, what it looks like in the in your bloodstream. And my friend said, hey, I know this company that's going public, and this is what they're working on, to remove the metals out of your body. If you look at the website, it's right on the website. I posted it on Twitter. Go read what they do. It extends life. It removes the metals out of your bloodstream. And I, I, to me, I was interested for that. And I told everyone, just go look at it, read it. I don't know anything about it. I, you know, if the pill is available, I'll take it tomorrow. And that's how the whole thing started. I had no idea they were going to naked short it on the first minute of trading. But the, the website says on there, this company wants to, it has working on something to extend your life. Who wants to short that one? Whether it's good real, fake, whatever it may be, who wants to do that? The criminals did it out of the gate. I don't know about you, but you know what? I want to extend my life if I can and my family's members and these guys killing it an hour into the day. And what, what, in two hours, they killed it. What else, what else can I say? I'm a criminal for reporting that information. You know what? So be it. But it's right there. Did I invest in it? No, I wish I could. I don't have the money. But there's someone trapped here. And I'm sure the gentleman that bought the million shares, if he can afford to buy $7 million worth of stock, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to <laughs> him and his friends come back and trample you next week. But I don't have the money to play. And if that was me, I would guarantee you I would trample you next week. This question's for, for me, but I'll quickly answer it. Do I need to transfer my MMTLP shares to American Stock Transfer, or should I leave in my brokerage account and see what happens? You're asking my opinion. I would, would run to the phone Monday morning and transfer your shares to AST. We can talk about it later. All right, sorry. Go on if you had something. No, so I, I gave you the, my opinion about that new IPO. The reason I followed it, the only reason I followed it was, was the conversation. And he said that's what they were working on, to extend your life, to take the metals out of your blood. It's right there. It's on the site. And I'm curious if it's going to work. And they're, you know, and they're, uh, and as time goes on, let's see what happens with the medical information that comes out. That's for so Tilo. Yes, that's it. Um, this this gentleman doubled down on ZJYL at seven dollars. Do you think that still has a squeeze in it? Yes, I think it's going to go next week. That's my opinion. Next week, yay! That's my opinion. Let's see what happens. I'm going to blast you on Twitter while you're not there to respond. If it doesn't go, <laughs> if it Don't doesn't go, I'm going to put your name out all over your Pam name, oh, saying, "Oh, God. he's such a bad." He's a bad person. Um, he said it would go next week. He's he he usually on the easy gives everyone the right information. He gave me <laughs> bad information. Uh, what happened to the truck? I can tell you this. Let me yeah. just finish that. For all a second. right, all right. In the real stock market, when I had a gut feeling and things were going to go, they usually went because it wasn't manipulation. Exactly. Stocks, you can. You can feel a stock. You can see a stock when That's it's going to exactly bubble. It's right. going to go. Yeah. Like the, the Celeste dad, he said he she, he feels like these two stocks are going to go. You can have that feeling. It's not against the law to have a feeling when you see something. My gut feeling, yes, I think they're going to go. But you know what? I, I can't take people. People that are attacking all of us are, are people that are, A, don't know what the hell they're doing in the equity markets. You make a financial decision. I'm not working your computer. You have to decide what's good for you and your family. I've always said protect your family. I've always said that a thousand times. 
I told you my tooth fell out of my mouth. I needed to sell a thousand shares to go to the dentist. He wasn't going to do it for free. I mean, that's life. Things happen. People die. You have to pay for funeral expenses, college, cars, you name it. It's a, it's a tough game. And this game is for you. So stop worrying about the person to the left and to the right of you. This game is about yourself. You know, this isn't no diamond hands. Whoever decided that name is, is moronic, number one. People can never band together because we all have financial commitments at different levels. If I had 10 million in the bank, I'll be diamond hands on a $100,000 investment. No shit. I'll do it. No problem. But when you're playing with limited funds, you got to make sure you stay alive until whatever happens, happens. So again, make sure you protect your family always. And if you have a gut feeling about a stock, speak up about it. There's no shame. You could say it. I like the 49ers. I like the Chiefs. Everyone's yelling on TV. You don't hang them all for saying, I like the Chiefs, and they lose. Only in the equity markets on Twitter do you get scolded for saying your opinion. You get scolded. And I tell you why, people, it doesn't bother me at all. I've been in the business a long time. I made good selections. I made bad selections. Everyone does it. That's the game. You don't want to listen to what I'm saying? I could care less. Don't listen. I'm breaking down what I see, and 99% of what I see is all fraud. You can blame the companies. Everyone goes after the companies. When the stocks go down, everyone starts yelling at the company. Can they move faster? Can you do this? Can they get a bigger deal? Everyone starts yelling. You can't make those things happen. The short sellers hit a sell button. Sell, 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 sell. We have to, the companies on the other side have to file documents. Look at ZJYL. They had to file, do a forward split. The NASDAQ required them to do it. They did it. You had to wait till the filing came out. Then you had to wait for the stock to split. And then you have to wait for Wall Street, who can't figure out with all the billions and trillions of dollars they have, how to do a forward split, how to give a dividend share. Think about that. I posted, I didn't get a chance to post. If you go to finra.org, you can see the monthly uh, monthly state, monthly disciplinary, uh, the fines, excuse me, against all these brokerage firms for their uh, their crimes. All of them always blame the system. Oh, the system wasn't in place, this wasn't. They've been in business 30 years, 20 years. No one has a system in place. Don't look at it, read it. I, I get tired of reading it. Cowan and Company, this one, uh, uh, all of them. Oh, a system. No one's in charge, who's running these companies? No one knows anything. A lot of systems are in place that's supposed to be in place for what? For fraud, right? Trades that are suspicious, all right? Whatever it is, they always miss them. Oh, we missed those. We missed 100,000 trades that shouldn't have happened. Oh, we mismarked our tickets. It's the system. Go read it. You'll get sick reading those things. And they're all in business. They're supposed to have compliance officers. They should all go to jail. They should be fired and go to jail. Everyone who signs off on these things. I'm sorry for ranting. Um, what happened to the truck? What would you like me to do with it? It's just a question. Um, no, I'm not. I, I listen. I can roll the truck out at any time. I just don't. I'm. I'm lost for words. What do I say on it? We cursed them out. We gave them the finger. We put it in front of the Capitol. We put it here, there, everywhere. Thirteen times we put it at the SEC. Uh, enforcement conference. To me, I thought that was the boldest on the world. They walk right past the truck. People raised a lot of money for Don Fizz to stay in D.C. for a month. Maybe they'd raise money for another truck. We, we'll we look into it. How's that? Listen, uh, I think it, I think it's important that you raise some money and send me to a, a visa for the summer so I can go hang out. I think there's naked short sellers there. I can go find them. I need about 50000 and I'll stay there for a month. I'll come back with a beautiful tan and maybe find the short seller. Is a Beezer near near Florida? Where's uh, a Beezer? <laughs> and a Beezer in Spain? Is it off the coast of Spain? It's a Beezer. It's off the coast of Spain. I'm yeah, just... I, I like to go hang out. So let's don't send me to D.C. Send me there. <laughs> so funny. In the U.K., they do the same thing. They, they changed the A into ER. Uh, uh, who cares? Just uh, tell me where the party is. That's what, that's what I want to do. I'm sick of doing this stuff. 
John Waddell thinks uh, Martin Shen should do another interview to have a follow-up. How about, John, we'll wait till there's a news announcement whenever it happens, if there's one. Then then it will have more impact. I heard, Mart I heard Martin's a great singer. Maybe you can get him to sing for us. For a supper? <laughs> We, we could get it. We'll get a can. He could sing on the corner. We could get money and we could stop buying the stock. We do a buyback with the money we raise. Is there a show called What's Troubling Me? No. I don't understand that question. Long Night. I don't know who that is on Twitter. <laughs> I hope it's not a. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave that alone. So no, we will no, soon no, win. Long, long night is a, a, a great guy. All I right. Know. He said we will soon win in GTI Finger and Zay G L Y L. Do you know the person? Yes. Okay. Uh um. Can you give a brief description of who Don Fizz is? He looks like a hero. Well, he I had dinner with him twice, and uh, he's, I mean, he's a human being, um, but he he's run big businesses, and uh, he's very sy systematic, and he's hard-charging. I think before he came to D.C., he was sending 1,500 emails to congressmen and senators a week, and he would test one email, and if he got a response, he'd use it again. If not, he'd change it, and he followed up with phone calls, and I think people also have helped set up meetings. Now, I walked the halls with Ham, who I consider a hero, Ham, that is, uh, two or three or four trips. I get confused because I also went over with Anna, but uh, yeah, I'd I, I'd say he's done a yeoman's job, and uh, every bit helps, you know. It has to start somewhere. So I don't think this is a. I think this is a statement. Nothing new with GTII. No, that's not a question. We have to wait for the company. To, to do an action, okay? And they've been quiet for a long time, so let's see what happens. I, you know, I, I don't, I'm not the company. I can't make a deal happen. We've been hearing deals. William met with people that were telling about this. Yeah, deal. and I got to follow up. I got to follow up on, but I, my own opinion is as long as David Reichman's in charge, it's unlikely that it, things are going to really change, but who knows? I'm not, I'm no genius on uh, human interactions. Wickedems says the Twitter game is always having a backup account. So I guess you have to have two accounts. Well, you know, I didn't I didn't think I was going to be fighting the 10 year war here. I thought it would be over with quickly, you know, I you know, but I'm here for the duration. I've been kicked off before. I forgot what my name was before. Jackass, I think it was. I can't remember. They, I fought. If you think I fought shorts before, I mean, now you should have been around in the early days. <laughs> I was fighting 500 crooks at a time. So, you know, I'm used to the battle. You know, in the Pat Byrne day, you know, I fought many, 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 many bad people. But the government keeps giving them the, the bullets to keep shooting us. What can I do? Um, uh, do you see high prices for Finger if they have to cover 205 million shares? Yes, I think it'll be $3. Uh, I hope you're not, not being sarcastic. Then. <laughs> do you I know? see enormous, I see enormous numbers. I see enormous numbers in the stock that I follow. That's the only reason I'm following them. If I wanted to buy a stock to make 20 cents, I would buy, I could go trade NVIDIA and, and Tesla, those stocks. Do you know U.S. Attorney Damian Williams? No, I do not. 
Another statement, GTII is old news now. Why um, is that? I don't know. Let's see. There's nothing to say. I can't say anything. Which, listen, GTII, would you like me to make up a fake story and tell people fake things? I can't do that. Why um, is the person who just said it's old news? Why don't they do like Don Fizz? Is that his name, Fizz? Yeah. And go to D.C. and call a cop. I welcome you to do it. I would go with you. I can't. We were out there helping GTII exposing the criminals who are the lowest form on the planet. They give you money and they just short and they, they, they Gretchen Morganson wrote their their loan sharks threatening people. They, they're even worse than the naked shorts. They got they got two stripes. That FINRA and the SEC called them bad actors already. They've been busted already for doing this. But they continue because no one stops them. They just change the names and go someplace else. Correct? Mm -hmm. How many LLCs do they have? It's all there. We they probably they moved to Virginia now, correct? Yeah. Um, okay, we got that. Uh, does ZJYL have a solid business fundamental story to fall back on similar to Finger? I don't think so. I do not know. I don't follow it. Um, Listen, as far as I'm concerned, the people that are here with us on ZJYL, we're buying five, 10, 100 shares. I know people that bought a lot of shares. They're here, they haven't sold a share, and that's the extent of what I know. I've never told anyone, hey, go all in, go kamikaze, do what you have to do here. This is the greatest thing since sliced bread. I told you it was a forward split. Let's see what happens. It's an educational thing. We got our education on it. We can see what's happened. You can see the shorts attack it. That's what I that's what it is. There's no fundamental stories anymore. Fundamentals win out in the long run when you don't need money. Finger motion has, has put that in place. They don't need money. They raised the money. My friends gave them the money. So we know they don't need money. Unless they stop having parties and blowing money on Super Bowl tickets and doing stuff like that, they're not going away. And I don't believe Martin's that type of guy. Um. This is for me, I'll quickly answer it. Uh, regarding moving MMTLPs shares that are in a 401k or an IRA, um, just try, you have to distribute it to yourself. I just did this finally Friday for my few shares in my IRA, you, I, and they're doing it. They, he said it takes up to three business days. They move it out of your 401k into a regular account, and that that you know they read to you that couldn't cause a taxable contra uh, sorry distribution well there's no value on it so you're there's no taxable distribution there you say great thank you for reading that to me and then you've got to ask them to send it to ast well i'll find out i might be too late i hope i'm not but uh, that's what i'm in the process of doing with my few shares well can anyone give me i gotta let's get away from the mmtlp thing for a second listen the people in mmtlp got a great a great organization or community as they like to call themselves and they're all fighting rowing the boat the same way gtii nothing has changed it's 450 million plus shares that are naked short the cream is Using the uh, LLC, Geneva Roth gave the company a loan. The company paid back the loan. Charlie Mayo is Kramer's uh, gopher. He does. He goes for this. He goes for that. Called the company up, left a message. The message has been recorded, and it's all over the street. Everyone can see it. It's been sent to the FBI, Secret Service, everywhere. What happens? The stock squeezes. Who pops out? Every day I spoke about the DTC has to see someone losing money here. There has to be an alert. Well, the alert went off at the DTC and they caught Alpine hiding the position. They put it in a court document. 
the SEC, FINRA, the DTC, they're all going after Alpine. All right, so obviously, whatever's, whatever was damage was done by the Kramers, it's in Alpine. Alpine is part of the crime. They probably split it, you know, partners, whatever. Remember, the Kramers don't have a prime broker, and that's why we heard they're opening a new one, and the name of that attorney was put up on Twitter. I forgot his name. These guys were trying to raise $20 million and open up a new prime broker so they can hide and do all their dirty work someplace where no one can see them. It's tough to go to a new prime broker and say, hey, I'm a criminal. Can you have, let me do my business here? I don't think they, uh, I don't think that works too well. Um, uh, all what? right, this is like another MMTLP card. They could, Schwab said the only way to transfer MMTLP was to, they would send a physical certificate to you and then you can send it to AST. That's, in fact, what I've experienced too. That doesn't sit well with you. Don't know why they can't wire it. Well, I think it's actually in a way better because you actually see physical certificates rather than trusting some electronic entry which is where all the fraud occurs. But anyway, once they ish send it to you, it's already at AST. You don't have to send it back to AST. So um, uh, anyway, let's move on. Uh, so let's go on to what I think here. Finger motion, okay? I think the fundamentals are here. That's my opinion. Do your own work. And if you look at it, if you look at it, just look at what the company's partnerships are. Their yeah, partnerships are off the chart, right? Mm -hmm. they, look who they're dealing with. No one has those relationships. No one has them. I told you before, go look. Go get me companies that have one relationship. Finger Motion has four, maybe $5 billion relationships. From AIZ, $10 billion. To uh, Munich Re. 50 or 60 billion. Pacific Life Free, I think it was 12 billion. China Mobile, China Unicorn, I don't know how many billions those things are. That's five relationships. And there's no way anybody's going to give you their name to use in a press release unless you're the real deal. And the real deal is a company that's $2.30 being shorted by Lynn Partners who couldn't give a F who their partnerships were. They were here to destroy. Seek, destroy, and steal as much as they can. That's what they that's their business plan. Only thing that the only thing that caught them off guard is that this company has strong shareholders that funded the whole the whole business operation. So now they got 15 million in cash. Now what do you want to do? No one has to go back to the street for any more money. The company is doing what? They're issuing a special dividend. Someone posted on Twitter before with uh Mark Cahodes. Did anyone see that? No. And he's talking about uh, William. You didn't see it. I didn't see it. Hold on a second. I think I could. I think I could address this one pretty easy. Hold on one second. All right. Where is it? Thing. Someone, Mark Cahodes, talked about. I don't know when it was, but he talked about. Uh, that the company should give out a, a dividend, sort of like a golden ticket, and uh, pronounce. I think he he posted it, and he talked. I can't retweet it, so I can't. I have to go back and look. But he put it up there, and he goes, "Where did you hear this before?" All right? That's been me saying it for years. That's how you got to. That's how you have to expose these guys. The only way to do it, you got to trap them. The SEC is not paying attention to it, and they leave us all hanging. All right, try to go get public companies to go get dividends. It's like it's like impossible. You got to get through their board of directors. You got to get the approvals. It's not easy. They're all afraid. Everyone's afraid. If you're afraid, you become CELU or CVM raising more money. Oh my God! Someone posted a picture of all these baby pandas on Twitter. Oh my God! There's like twelve of them. That's fantastic. Anyway, I'm trying to look for the story pronounced, put it up on Twitter. 
And uh, I, I appreciated it before. I don't know where he got it from. It was Mark Cahodes talking about it. And uh, it's pretty interesting that exactly what I said. And he was the money manager doing business through Goldman, got caught by Pat Byrne for putting out false and misleading st stories like, uh, whatchamacallit? Hi, Camp. I'm just reading the New York Post while you're talking. This is Charlie Gas Grasparino. Ralph Norman is down a massive rabbit hole after his latest meme stock conspiracy. Just published at 4.03. Ralph Norman is a bit off. Don't take my word for it. I can go on and on, but I'll stop at Crazy Town. Conspiracy theories involving a meme stock known as MMTLP. Most people have never heard of MMTLP or Charlie Grasparino for that matter. And many wish they so did. So he's trying to throw he's trying to throw the people under the bus. He's trying to go after the uh, the senator or representative or whatever he is. Yeah, so he's Ralph Norman. He's so let's look at let's look at it this way. Gasparino is is he's washed up. He's on his last days. All right, he's on his last days in the game. And what is he? If he's right. He gets. He thinks he gets another shot at life, right? That's how he looks at it. So he's just making a noise. No one pays attention. Most people don't even know who he is. He's a washed-up reporter from 40 years ago. And as Pete, Pete from Philly says, he's a he's a midget on top of it. Well, that's not very nice. Well, There's I, lots I, of I'm midgets in the world. I'm not I'm not in that fight, so I'm just telling you what I see. And he's picking up dog shit now. <laughs> I thought, if you just look at it, you can see yourself. I, I'm not involved in that fight. There's a lot of fights here. I'm not involved in it. Um well he he goes on, it's depressing, but I hopefully it doesn't stop. To me, it means he's probably been paid a suitcase full of cash to write this. But I hope right. it doesn't stop, uh, Norman. Welcome to crazy towns. Yeah, oil wells in West Texas were reverse mergers, a nation private company, and a preferred stock that founds its way onto the over-the-counter market, the so-called pink sheets, where a lot of crazy stuff goes down. <laughs> and it gets messier. That's what that idiot wrote? Those, I'm skipping a lot of it. Those who tried to sell after December, December 8th, and they are legion if the cries on social media are indication, were, as they say, SOL. Their MMTLP turned into non-tradable shares of Nextbridge. That's not factual. Norman has heard these cries, and he appears to think there's some grand scheme involved among the Securities Exchange Commission, the FINRA, and maybe some unscrupulous Wall Street types. Now he's, quote, demanding answers, even after FINRA provided him with pages of detailed bullshit, I mean answers, which like the memes he either didn't read or doesn't understand. This Gasparino is an G R A S S Barino without the G R in the front of it. Um, according to Fender, it halted trading in MMTLP on December 9 to make sure people didn't buy a security that didn't exist. Sounds reasonable to me. Though they're the ones that approved this trading scheme. Oh, God. Though the agency also should have proposed mandatory investor education courses for any shill like Charlie Gasparino explaining how they lost money on this boondoggle. Just think about how hard he's working to cover it up. Hold on. I want to play this for everybody. One second. Hold on. Let's see if I get it. Oprah's stock owns something called T0, which is an alternative 
trading system and you can trade something called. Oh, I have something. Oh. What happened to the synopsis? FP with utility, whether it's free popcorn or movie passes or a special golden ticket, would be dividended out to AMC holders. And I think one, you would provide them. So there you go. He's talking about giving everyone a special ticket, right? A golden ticket. Right? That's what he's doing. So what else can you say? That is, he knows it. He was a naked short seller. Mark Ahodes used to write, and I could put, I don't want to put the story up. I don't want to get in a fight with that guy again. He, uh, he used to write stories, fake stories like Capybara. <laughs> and they did, they used a, 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 a firm called Gradient at Arizona. And he got caught by someone inside the firm, ratted him out to Pat Byrne, where he was basically reporting, he was reporting the crimes and he basically was telling them, hold up on that fake story. I want to short more stocks. How's that one? So he was writing the stories, paying for the stories to be written and then holding them up so he can write, write short more shares. Pat Byrne caught him, caught him and instead of prosecuting him, made him pay him $5 million to let him go. And he had to give up Goldman Sachs. That's what he did, Mark Cahodes. And if you want, I could post that story. I can't post that story. I'm sorry, I can't go on. I can't okay. believe this is on uh, Twitter, but apparently they're saying on Twitter, Finger recently took a loan from Lind. No, they, they, they did before, but it's all gone. And they're not ever going to take money from Jeff Easton, Haile Kim, Sam now, Chung. What, who would say that? <laughs> someone desperate. Someone desperate. We just met the CEO. The yeah. CEO said he just said it. That they, they don't need to go to the capital markets. He just said it. Yeah. So, listen, if you're going to make stories up, at least show us with the proof that you have it. Okay, she didn't make it up. She was just reporting that it was there. Yeah. No, I'm not. I listen again. There's people here that don't understand it. We got to make sure the company was funded. I told you that. My friend gave him three and a half million dollars at ten bucks. He owns three hundred and fifty thousand shares at ten. Where's the stock at, William? Which one? Finger. Oh. Two thirty-five. Yeah, something like that. Two thirty-six. All right, let me. I can look it up. Yeah, that's it. It's two thirty-five. My friends are not crying. They're down seven dollars on three hundred and fifty thousand shares. He didn't say boo. As a matter of fact, they buy more. So again, it's a tough game. They did it for a reason. They didn't do it just to throw money out the wall at the you know against the wall and hopefully it sticks. They did it because they know the fundamentals of the company and time will make it work. Now, we all want it faster so we can move on with our life. I got it. But when the manipulation started and it started to hurt my family, I stepped in. I'm saying, screw you. You're not getting away with this. And who did I bump into? Lynn in the middle of this whole thing. This didn't start with Lynn. There was a small naked short seller many moons ago where it was six million shares. Remember I reported? Yeah, that? I remember that. Yeah. And I think whoever that was got squeezed out. I didn't even know who it was because the company had no debt. And all of a sudden, when they took the money, that's when it really got insane. And that's when Lynn Partners popped in. So, toxic loan is tied to stock. These guys wanted to convert, drive it down as low as possible. The same thing they do everywhere else. The same pattern all the time. His friend in our, uh, uh, Australia is up 220%. Every company they invested in is down 220%. Yeah. You tell me. You tell me. You tell me. I, I'm, not, I'm not a detective, but that sounds like it's pretty much spot on and where it's coming from. Um, another person asking if you think Tilo 
has hit a new low. If T low is going to squeeze, would you play it? Would you go I, into it? I would. I. You want me to recommend it? I will recommend it. I believe it's going to go. Again, right. you saw the criminal activity from day. This stock is two hours old and they hit it. I don't even know. Just go read what they do. Yeah. The, the, the link is right there. Read what they do. It says it extends life. Who would want it? Again, who would want it? Who would want to hurt anybody to extend their life? You don't want that company to survive? Yeah. Um, but it doesn't make a difference. Kill that one too. It doesn't make a difference. That's what they all do. It's the same thing. If we haven't already transferred our shares, did we miss the boat? Uh, no, uh, I don't think you've missed the boat. I I just believe, Brooklyn Chris, that you have to show that you made the effort. If they then say, hey, you didn't get in, you have an argument before a court, which you won't have to make. Somebody else will make it for you. I just think you have to make the effort. Uh, will we miss out on any possible settlement? I don't think so. I think the settlement, if there is one, we don't know how the settlement will be. But I think you just look at you want to look at a settlement. Go read Dole Foods. Right. They got they had a lawsuit. They had to pay it out. Everyone shows their ownership, and you get paid. Now it's just a matter of who's going to pay you. That's all. So if there is a settlement, everyone gets paid. You got a statement that you own it. You'll get paid. You know, moving it to the transfer agent and moving it from the brokerage firm, that, you know, William can tell you more about it. I'm not paying attention. All right. So this person says AST is already full, not accepting anymore. So that's a disappointment. Um, I should have operated sooner for myself. But that does not mean that you shouldn't you, try it with mean, your what, brokerage what firm. Mean, William? What does that mean that they're full? I don't understand. Well, there, there's ostensibly... Uh, the. Uh, Chuck Gasparino doesn't really understand, but they ostensibly there were 164 million 800,000 shares of Nextbridge available for MMTLP. So if there were 650,000 million uh, shares of, neck, of uh, MMTLP in the world, after they get to 165 million, they're full. I got it. They're full. But the thing is, DC, the allocation of Nextbridge shares isn't done by who shows up to the ticket counter. You've got an intermediary, and the intermediary is your broker dealer. So it's really what matters is how much, how many of the shares your broker dealer has have they assigned. So I still think you got to try. And if you well, if it yeah. hasn't worked. Um, yeah, there's try it. See, try to do it. Tell me you like to do it, and see what you get back. Yeah, and then and just whatever you get back, jot it down. Who you're speaking to, and get the information. That's all. Yeah. yeah, it all helps out that you put pressure on it. Charlie Gasparino is is he's a shill for somebody who's in trouble. There's not even a question, and they're giving the wrong information on top of it. That's the craziest part. Uh, Cindy Lou, who I know you don't think the high numbers on uh, MMTLP settlement are realistic. For my own part, I've backed up my numbers, which are high. But I also believe that if you walk in the door asking for a low number, they'll meet you in the middle and you'll get even a lower number. So that's my feeling on it. Start high. It's always going to be a settlement. You're never going to get the best thing possible and they're never going to make you take the worst thing possible. So anyway. Just use your common sense. The brokerage firms are caught. They owe everybody, they owe everybody their stock and there's no way out. And now you got the government officials on top of it. They already, the, you, this, this to me ended when the government had the hearing and questioned the SEC under oath and the SEC did the tap dance. Then they asked them to provide more an update. Again, we want the number, and they gave back the letter. And now they're really pissed off because now everyone can see that the SEC is tap dancing again. Right? Right. 
So at this point, this game is over. It's just a matter of when it's going to happen to me. That's what that's what this is about. This uh, DC is asking you, Ham, if we miss the boat on American stock transfer, once a settlement happens, are we still included? They have to pay everybody. Yeah. They have to pay people who have the dividend and people that have the, as long as you got a financial statement. Because if you have a financial statement, that's basically wire fraud by your brokerage firm, unless you do exist, right? Hey, E-Trade, you sent me this statement. No one wants to pay me for it. They say I'm not a holder. Then what is in my account? I have a statement from you. I would advise you all to print out your statements. Yeah. Showing you I, that you had it. That you invested in it. I really don't, Brooklyn Chris, I really don't think you've missed out on a settlement. And it's, it's, you know, not everyone's going to get a, get shares of Nextbridge. And there's negatives to having the shares of Nextbridge, maybe. Uh, but for me, that's a real asset. Whereas a chit saying, you know, you know, an IOU, I don't know. I think that the court systems are going to reward us handsomely, but it could be 10 years from now. If the pressure going on in Congress gets momentum or et cetera, the, the financial system will reward you and me sooner. William, are you out of your mind it's going to take 10 years? Oh, I don't making that up. Eight years. I just said it. This is this is going. This is going. This is going fast, and it's going to be open. It's going to be shortly. See, listen to him. This, this Don Fizz, Anna, Busy Brands, Frankie Nez, everyone that's helping pushing this boulder down the road. The, the SEC and Finra can't hide much. You know, are they negotiating behind the scenes with Finra? I wouldn't doubt it. That's what I heard. Who knows if they're doing it? I don't know. They can't keep hiding. That's for sure. I also think there'll be an opportunity in a settlement to unwind decisions you made. There's going to be a lot of back and forth. There'll be a lot of um, the one thing I would tell everybody adaptability. Is I would tell everybody stop your conversation with Charlie Gasparino. Just make fun of them and move on. Don't even address it. That's a go find something else to talk about and ask him what he thinks he's going to win the Super Bowl. Don't, don't even address it. He has the wrong information. He's never going to change his, his story. All right. It's sort of like the White House telling us that there's no problem at the southern border. He's, he's going to have the same, he's going to have the same momentum, the same thing. He's got the line. Whoever's giving it to him, whether it's the guy Doug from Virtue, whoever it is, some multi-billionaire is telling him what to say. And you know what? That's what he's going to say. So don't even address him. Make fun of him. Ask him about ping pong and just whatever you want to talk about. But don't address him. He's looking for that. Don't, don't get dragged into it. Because he's going to drop misinformation all day long, which you just saw he did. So stay away from it. Stick to your battle. Call the SEC up. The SEC got 56,000 complaints, right? Everybody everybody, call up on Monday. If you're listening, if anybody hears from the MMTLP group, have everybody call the SEC at 12 o'clock on Monday. Flood their lines with phone calls. Make them drown. And then the next week, everybody call on Tuesday. And then Wednesday, then Thursday and Friday. Just keep moving it around. At the same time, the same day. Just keep calling. That's all you have to do. Forget Charlie Gasparino. Just keep calling them. Call FINRA and call that. Get the number for that number. And everybody call the same time, the same day, and flood their phones all day long. That's all you have to do. Um, West Virginia is asking you, do you think our stocks have a better chance of running after the erection, the election? No, I think it's I think it's showtime. I think it's close. I think the desperation by the crooks is very obvious. It's a every name we're talking. We went from a couple of names. We're seeing it everywhere now. It's like you know, I'm telling you, I noticed it in 2000, and it was here, there, here, there, here, there. Now it's everywhere. <laughs> so I spoke to an attorney that I worked with in 2000. He said, "You thought the problem was big in 2000. Can you imagine what it is now?" And he's right. It's a hundred times bigger. 
I like this guy. He says, uh, when guys at work complain, I tell them, if that's how you feel, I will quit. Then they reply, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> then I say, shut up and go back to work. Same with stocks. If you can't take it anymore, get out. Yeah, and I've reason. always said that it's not an easy game. This game is because this game is not outsmart you. You're you're smarter than you think you are. They're out frauding us. That's all. They they, they play you emotionally. They do that, and that's uh, for everybody. We all go through that. They do it. Listen, I you can tell. Back in the days, I could see people buying a stock. We used to, we used to have people that were tape readers. They read the, the trades go by. We can actually tell the momentum of a stock by the trades. In this environment, there's so many fake trades. We, I can't tell you what's going on. I know professional people can't tell. The, the, um, tape, is all, the tape is all fraudulent. The trades are all make-believe all over the place. Um, Jennifer says hi, and she told... Dirty Mayo, you're that we're live, and he and she hopes he comes on again. So, that's Jeff. That, that dirty bastard. So, Brooklyn, Chris, I'm starting to think you're a uh, computer or shill, so I'm not going to answer any more questions from you. I like, I agree, Steve King, and that's one of the problems. I, I'm an oil guy, you know, a resource guy. I think Nextbridge sounds like a great stock to own. For the long term, anyway, I don't have enough to be a Rockefeller. What's going to happen with Plantier stock? I don't know the answer. P L T R. Yeah, P A L A N T I R. Is that P L T R? I think it's P L T R. That was a, uh, a, it was a, it was a hot name. I don't know where it is right now. That that stock has been just shorts all over that name. I don't know where it is now. Stevie Cohen took a stake in it. It ran to twenty-eight dollars or something like that. I lost track of where it is. I, I haven't followed it. Um, I think it's a. I think it's a mini version of Snowflake. If I'm not, if I'm correct, I can't remember. Has anyone asked yet what the trigger for a T low hit a new low short squeeze would be? T low. Um, no one's asked that. T low is that new stock, right? Yeah, T low is the new stock. Uh, let's listen. There's a gentleman that bought the whole float. Do you think he goes back to? If it was me, I'd be steam coming out of my ears, and I would regroup, get my friends, and trample whoever it is. That's what I would do. And I would go seek counsel and go get them. But you know, I I, I don't know. Read this. Read what the company does. If it, if it fits your needs as a long term investment, to me. Just read what it does. To me, it hits home because I took the COVID shot. And I'm concerned about the, the the metals in the in the shot, and I'm trying to figure a way to get them out. Uh, someone told me to take these vitamins, and I, you know, getting the vitamins shortly because I don't know. People are dropping dead all over the place. But we follow the science here. All right, don't give me the they, shit. I got it. If they I hadn't taken, if they hadn't taken that therapy, they might have dropped dead. War in a worse way. Um, anyway, uh, you don't remember the New York Post had uh, front page 20, 25 years ago. It said J Lo hits a new low. You don't remember that? I always remembered that. No, I don't. J Lo hits a new low. I that don't care about J Lo. I don't care about anything. I care about this and I move on. She's Jenny I from the no Bronx. Jenny There's from no the block. There's no one that influences me about anything. I, I live a normal life, and I I I always yell at my daughters for following the Kardashians. I says, I says these people are just they 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 add no value. So please stop following them and watching their shows. I always say that. The new you one know, to follow is you know. not so swift. Uh, well, I told you I used to talk to her dad. I told you that story. He was a broker at Merrill Lynch, I believe, back in the day. So again, he was very nice. He said he told me today his daughter was going to get a big contract. She did. He sent my family tickets to see her first show. She opened up for Tim, is it Tim McGraw and Faith Hill? Yeah, out in New Jersey. He, she opened, and uh, my family went to see her back then. That was her first show. Wall Street's a funny place, people. We all talk to each other. We know. 
So when I hear things, it's usually pretty good. You know, if I heard TELO that they're saying that the short selling is coming out of Canada, I believe the brokerage firm in Miami sort of got a good feeling about what's happening there. I'm sure they were pissed off too. All right, I'll answer this, Steve F. The brokers will only send physical certificates if AST is not accepting anyone else. They are. Are we stuck? Look, let me just answer that. If you get the physical certificates delivered to you at home, you're in. You're in AST. And if you don't believe me, just call AST once you receive them. They ask you for some, like your birthday or whatever, or whatever they ask. And the computer comes back and we have, we show you own. And in a disembodied voice, they tell you how many shares you have. So, well, the problem is, so you understand everyone, there can only be 165 million. So that's all the people they know who own those shares. What denomination of it, they don't know. Merrill Lynch may say you have a thousand shares and meanwhile you own 50,000 shares, you know, so they, that's the discrepancies that we try to expose. There's, the, there's a difference between what's at the depository trust and at the brokerage firm. I put that little draft up all the time. It's the same graph. Everyone has an amount of shares the brokers own. E-Trade owns 10 million. They call the DTC up. The DTC only has 1 million. That means they have a short of 9 million. Everyone has a number. MMTLP should 100%, besides subpoenaing the SEC and FINRA, they should subpoena the brokers for the in each broker's firm to see how many shares each one owns. That will throw the FINRA and the SEC in a tizzy because they can't cover. How are they going to cover for the brokerage firms? The brokerage firms can't complain, can't tell everybody they're the government, right? right? They can't hide behind anything, so go after them too. So when you're talking to Ralph Norman, tell him to hammer those guys too. Um. Uh, do you think a settlement of MMTLP would have a follow-on effect on other heavily shorted stocks? You're going to faint. That's how good it's going to be. You're going to sit there and say, holy shit, look at these things go. You can mark that down. Write that down. That's what you're going to say. Because the time that happens, it'll be too late. All the stocks will take off. Um, I apparently yes, do. I do. It's going to have a tremendous effect, You're causing squeezes, basically. And that's why I said, what are the catalysts for GTII? One of them is MMTLP, correct? One is the FBI, one's the Secret Service, one's the DOJ, right? One could be a deal, maybe the Trento Mine deal that William met with the people there. Maybe that's going to light the scandal. But MMTLP, once they get a number, and they say, well. There's uh, 600 million shares more than is available here. The whole world changes right then that day. Um, because everyone's going to look and say, how did the counterfeit six shares enter the U.S. equity markets? That's all. That's what's going to come out. Uh, apparently, there's earnings coming up on GTII. Do you have thoughts? Yes, they uh, they sold six billion AI chips. I don't. I have no idea. <laughs> the key thing with GTII, they don't have a burn rate. They don't have to turn back to the pimp and ask for more money. They well, that's just don't the best have to business do it. model. And what killed Vocal? What killed Vocal? Five hundred thousand a month burn rate, or whatever it was. There you go. The burn rate. Two hundred and fifty to something. I don't remember. Whatever it was, that's what killed him, his burn rate. And I've always been a believer. I'd rather do nothing and sit around and, and wait out the SEC. And guess what? GTI is hung in there, and we're an inch away from MMTLP exposing the whole world here. China, South Korea, Malaysia, India, everyone's screaming about something that most of you guys never even heard of before. Countries are screaming about it. So if you thought we were wacky, all of a sudden, we got countries going after them. So right. everything I've been telling you has been right on the nose, right? Now it's a global problem, right? And I, I said something before to Kristen. I said, uh, China knew in November the shorts were attacking. They knew before. The, they knew before they collapsed. There's a story about that on Twitter. Go read it. She posted it. 
All right. Chattanooga in November to see what we're going to attack, William. Oh, that's amazing. All right, so Celeste, I'm going to play something for you, and it's going to it's going to annoy him for 30 seconds. That's for you, Celeste. That's, oh, sorry. God, stop it. That's for you. And we say hi to you. Ham says hi. Lucky says hi. And that was a little puppy doing that, that song. Okay. Um, this guy says PLTR is $24. I oh, like this stock. Good. And I love to hear you guys exposing frauds because it makes me feel good. Never giving up on trading. Thank you, Nick. Negative. Well, that that stock is hung in there the whole time. I don't. I remember it down to sixteen. Stevie Cohen took a stake. Does he still have it? I don't know. If you could look at that. Stevie's a pretty smart guy, and he's uh, he's he drives between the lanes th these days. He doesn't. Uh, he already paid his three billion dollars, so I don't think he's getting in trouble anymore. So if he's investing and staying, if he's staying in PLTR. He's got smart people working him with them. So it's a long term, probably, you know, it'll probably double one day. There, uh, Victor Jara, I don't know that there's any negatives to leaving your shares of MMTLP with a broker. All I know to me is by having shares of Nextbridge, you have a certainty th that you own something which I think is valuable. You may not. I do think if and when a settlement comes financially, people are going to have an opportunity because there's going to be scrambling at the end to make it all work out, moving of deck chairs and all that on the Titanic. You'll be able to move back, I think, and take advantage of anything. I don't know what the settlement's going to be. I do know that Nextbridge has oil and it's their their value is growing but i don't think there's a necessarily a negative of keeping mmtlp you're you just at some point instead of having an option to go to next bridge you'll just have an expired uh an expired uh laundry check or uh, an expired you know you'll have an expired chit and you're just counting on the system to give you something for it I don't know. I don't know. It's your call. William, let me just, you, you can explain the MMTLP, that, that whole conversation later. I just want to make sure everybody understands. We're talking about counterfeit shares. The system is full of counterfeit shares. All right. They're in all, they're in all names. They're deadly in the smaller names because we don't have institutional support. They cannot settle Apple computer, the video. They can't, there's naked shorts and all those names. They get, they get, they get bought in and churned because there's institutional support. When they can't borrow the shares anymore and there's, you know, a big short interest, like I'm sure NVIDIA has now at $700, wherever it is, these guys will naked short those names also. So again, they can't do it. it the system has afforded these guys a loophole for them to sell counterfeit shares. I don't know why the loophole is here. They all know it's criminal. If you go look at Chris Cox, the SEC chairman, we put it up from 2008. It calls naked short selling is a fraudulent activity. They all know about it. That's from 2008. It's right there. It was at an SEC meeting. What they did to drag this out was create a soft version of enforcement with Reg Show, which was basically a failure and it left the loophole open. I put stories up from uh, 2011, where it's the, uh, the Economist, one of the top financial magazines in the world, saying the regulators are worried about, uh, uh, about the growing number of unsettled trades. It's rattling the regulators. That's what we have, unsettled trades. You can't settle trades that are all fake. You need to have a real share to match a purchase of a real share. So these, these fails to deliver because the guys are selling it. 
Then we found out information that they're housing all this offshore, where FINRA does, has no authority over people that are holding, holding positions offshore. Well, if you're a U.S. citizen looking at this, you can sit there and say, how could it be possible that someone in Germany is counterfeiting our equity markets and our regulators are not, they have no control over what's going on over there. If that doesn't scratch, make your head scratch, I don't know what will. The, call, the small companies that we follow had toxic note guys in it, and they are the most obvious person to short or to sell counterfeit shares of the size that they've done. They use the note, the debenture, as a crutch to protect them on the upside because they can always convert the shares. Both of these companies have paid off their toxic notes, and that's why we're following them. All right. They once you get rid of the toxic note, the short seller has no way of covering. The only way he can cover it is in the open market. That means, like we buy it, they have to go buy it. It's dragging on because the SEC needs to enforce this. All right. They keep selling more and more to get us to panic. They have made people panic out and sell. People have taken losses because of this. All right. But there's people that understand it and that are acquiring and not going away and are buying more. GTI is different than finger motion because finger motion has tremendous fundamentals. GTI doesn't have it. We're waiting for GTI to announce something fundamental to change the story there. If MMTLP, which I believe can change the whole system and save everybody by accident, MMTLP was help was was uh, was held up, stopped trading by FINRA and the SEC, has now trapped the shorts and the longs. The shorts are trapped because now they have a huge problem. So what do they do? They roll out Charlie Gas Bag, uh, Gasparino out here to, to, to spread false information. You got a fake story from Forbes. You got Gasparino. Does anyone see the pattern here yet? Why would anybody defend? Who would care? It doesn't even trade. Why would you waste your time on this story? The only reason people are writing stories is because they need to make this go away. The cat's out of the bag. The representatives, the SEC, they all, the uh, Congress people, they're all sending letters now. It's out of control. It's gonna, it's gonna hit. I don't know what day it's gonna hit, but the day it hits, it changes the whole game. The game may end in finger motion and GTI before MMTLP, but MMTLP is the door that's gonna slam. It's gonna close this whole thing up. All right, because if they can show there's 650 million shares long and there's only 160 million shares to give out, that number in the middle, how did that happen? Imagine you go be Gary Gensler, go stand in front of everyone in the finance committee saying, well, we don't know how this happened. Well, dummy, did it happen anywhere else? Yeah, it happened everywhere else. Now, what are you going to say? Who's behind it? Who's been selling it? You know, think about the FBI and the DOJ and the Secret Service and Homeland Security chasing all these guys down around the globe, all the money. They're going to walk away from all those positions. You're talking about total chaos. But we're on the right side of the chaos, so I don't feel good about it. Is everyone going to understand um, that, William? Give me a yes or no. Yeah, everyone understands it. This gentleman okay. wants you to know that cilantro extract removes the uh, heavy metals. Ryan wants to tell you that. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll make a note of that. Thank you. That's my concern, and I'm sure it's a lot of people's concerns, and that's why this this company bumped into me. That You know as much as I do about the company. That's it. This guy's talking about LUNR February 14th Falcon 9 SpaceX rocket <laughs> launcher. That makes me remember, I think today is the new Chinese New Year, Dragon. I think yeah, it's there. My friends in London all sent me the Happy New Year thing. <laughs> this guy's asking my nickname in high school, Cre creepy as F face. Thank you, Telly. Very kind of you. Mine uh, was ring ding. <laughs> ring ding. <laughs> and I got it because a uh, 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 big football player, I was on the football team. He got up and he grabbed my food or something like that. Like For some reason, I took my ring ding and I smashed it in his face. He was going to kill me. He, he went then he burst football. out laughing. He, he, he was going to kill me, but he said because I had the balls to stand up to him, he never did it. 
and he shook my hand and that was the end of it. And every time I went to the cafeteria, the, the, the guy who was monitoring the cafeteria says, okay, we can all eat in peace now. Ring dings here. That's they said make fun of me. <laughs> Pretty good story. <laughs> This Lewis says the guy that owns the float of Tilo should work out a deal with the company to issue a dividend. Then the shorts would have to pay one. For it's the public. Picture. It's public four hours. <laughs> it's time no to pay a dividend. It's no one can move that fast. I was actually trying to give the story to Mark Gazeal. We've been we've been playing phone tag. I copied him on an email that I sent to Charlie Payne, and I sent to the SEC and the FBI. I sent it to everybody. I said, if there's a crime, here it is, and uh, we'll take the we'll take the uh, payment in quarters if they want to give it to us. We'll take change, anything. We reported the crime. We should get paid, right? Um, we should get paid, or you should, you all out there should. This gentleman's asking, will our GTI ev dividends ever become live? I actually called in on mine yesterday. I don't know why I was bored with life, and I found out that I had to fill out at E-Trade, some form such and such, and my eyes glazed over. I said, why? But anyway, I am I requested the form. I'm going to fill it out. It's electronic, and then they'll take care of it, they say. they're walk Robert, they're walking everyone through hoops because they're trying to stagger. They're trying to stop you from asking for them. Yeah. My friend John, who passed away from COVID, Okay, he was a great guy out of Tampa, insurance guy, great guy. And he used to take the time of the day, two hours a day, chasing the brokerage firms because he knew they were wrong. And he passed away, but he used to tell me this is unbelievable what he has to do just to get dividends or whatever it was, the warrant at the time. They told him he couldn't exercise, if he exercised his warrant and gave the money to the company to $2.75 that they would not allow him to put the stick to the, the warrant, the new stock back in his into his, his account. That was the way for the brokerage firms to stop us on that dividend. Every which way the, the company tried. And for those who don't know, the company bought a Picasso was going to give out everyone a little token, a piece of a Picasso. The SEC blocked that one. Then they wanted to give out a crypto coin. The DTC blocked that one. So for those who think that GTI and we can't talk about just go back and read the past of what the company's done in their press releases. Go back and read it. And you'll say, are you kidding me? This company did all this. And did we put the truck in front of the SEC 13 times and they've never even addressed it? Think about that for a second. If you think MMT is crazy, think about what GTI has been doing. This guy is under the impression that buying doesn't hurt the shorts. Well, it depends on your time frame. Buying will eventually hurt the shorts, particularly if it causes the price to go over. Well, the, the whole thing with that, William, is that we did that. And you can see the, the waves of buying that we put into these companies. Yeah. If the SEC, they, they'll bend, but they don't break because the SEC has not enforced the... Uh, the That's the exactly system. right. And all the criminals have to do is have if you can call it courage, but have the steadfastness to keep selling. Look at AMC and GME. They went to the moon, sort of, halfway to the moon, and they just kept selling. They made it all back. They keep coming, selling back. Investors flip it, they sell it. Investors become sellers, and they push it down, and they help them. That's all it is. So, time is a killer of all deals. And my grandmother said, time wounds all heals. Chris G says, Ham, I'm on the way, on my way to a Maple Leafs game. When we finally put this to bed, we'll go to Madison Square Gardens together. Uh, so that's something you can look forward to. Um, all right. Not legal advice says hello to pork loin. And I will remind everybody tonight in an all-exclusive uh, YouTube event at 8 p.m. New York City time, Not Legal Advice is interviewing somebody. I forgot who it is. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to be taking a 10-milligram uh, 
<laughs> a pot gummy tonight at 9.15. So uh, I'll be groggy by 12. <laughs> He's interviewing somebody charming and important. I just forgot who it is. But 8 o'clock tonight, not legal advice, you two. Listen, everyone, you should take the time to listen to him. He understands the GT. For those in GTII, he understands everything about the Alpine case. We've had discussions about why Alpine would be dragging this out, spending millions of dollars on legal fees. For what reason? For a business that is going to be shuttered and closed, no matter what they do, they're out of business. What are they looking for? A medal that they beat FINRA? That, that, that means nothing in this game. They're doing it for a reason. Richard will, I'm sure, will explain the latest on the Alpine case. And uh, before your eyes glaze over, try to understand that this is important stuff because once those doors get kicked in by the regulators, they can see what's going on and see where they're hiding and moving stuff at Alpine. And that is the Kramers, the GTII Kramers prime broker is Alpine. So it's like, it's like your bank. If your bank is Chase Bank, once they kick the door in, they're going to find out what's going on in Chase. That's what that is. Anyway, listen, everyone, I'm going to run. I got to do, uh, we're going out for pizza, so I'm going to go have a, a nice dinner. And uh, I'll be back to listen to Richard's thing. I may be uh, a little woozy, but I'll try to listen. All right, everyone, have All a great right, night. All right, Ham, thank you very much. Everyone appreciates it. You're welcome. Hello, Henry. Hey, lucky boy. It's only 5 o'clock. Um, it's only five o'clock. Can you give me just, I don't know, give me just five minutes more, 15 minutes more, then we'll go on a walk. All right. Um, I was going to tell him that not legal advice, but he hung up pretty quickly. I'm wondering what I'm going to do when I have over a hundred. <laughs> I hope you have that much money. The rest of us will call you, sir. Actually, we'll be calling your executive assistant. We'll never get through to you. Yeah, we'll be united. Rumor on Twitter that whistleblowers ready to go on MMTLP rumors. And going back to that question, I'm not saying that you have to absolutely get out. People have asked me my opinion. And my opinion is not get out. That's the wrong word. Uh, you know, move from MMTLP over to Nextbridge, AST. Um, there's different permutations of all of it. I believe Wall Street has to settle this or they go out of business. That's what I think. So I think they will settle it. But um, the I'm trying to remember the name of that. Ah, shoot. Anyway, they put out a press release and they drilled into, they found a new shelf. I'm trying to remember the name of the uh, sand. And I, I'm having Bixby or Bliss or something. Any, I can't remember right now. But it's it's um, something like 250 feet thick, and it, it has a huge volumetric extent. Um, and someone said it was 11 billion barrels potentially in that whole structure, and that's just one of several. Anyway, you do just some rough arithmetic but it's all guesswork until you see the engineering report it's guesswork until there's maybe two buyers bidding with each other but i can easily see a, a valuation eventually of a thousand dollars a share or more am i right i you know you won't know until Anyway, you won't know. There's so many variables. Oil prices have to be up. You have to see the engineering report. You have to know about the infrastructure and the costs, all of that. But um, 
I just think uh, Nextbridge is an exciting story. That's my bias. When shorts are marked long, retail never gets relief. Pop, pop, fizz, fizz. Well, I don't know if Ham would run for Congress because he's, um, but it's an interesting point. Why not? He could put all that energy in for two years. It's a good point. I happen to know that in a blue state, he's not going to get a lot of the votes. I once raised a, um, money for a company years ago, 20 some years ago. That was their whole uh, model. We raised a lot of money, uh, voice to text. And uh, I'm sure the technology survived somewhere else. It was the late 90s. So the technology probably survives in somebody else's company. Tilo is proof of no naked counterfeit shares. Well, that's a double negative, right? Naked counterfeit, I guess. I, I'm not sure what you mean. I think Tilo is proof of counterfeit shares, but I don't know. Jeff is hitting on Jennifer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, M. Casey, is that right about whistleblowers? I can see Russia from my house. I can see SpaceX launches in California. That's that is that would be so interesting. That would be so fascinating. I think this is correct. They don't even need a bond as an excuse. But but they are coming out with other financings like uh, at market or above market warrants. All any of these do is offer some solace to the prime broker and a shady uh, shady lawyer fills out the form and tells the prime broker, yeah, we'll have this at some point. It limits the risk. These guys have control of everything bad. Uh, well, every risk, let's say. They have control of every risk except one. Something out of the blue that makes the stock run. And these, these uh, forms of financing give them a, an escape valve. It gives them a way to release steam from the pressure cooker if there's ever a run in the stock. So that's why they start shorting those, those companies. They really don't get involved in shorting stocks um, that they don't have that with. Although uh, I think once a stock gets down to a certain level, everyone piles on. Um, the other, I was going to say something else. Um, I, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, let me read what you asked. I don't think they're desperate. I just think they're, they're, you know, they live in a regulatory world where nothing's enforced, so they just press their bets. They're not going to jail. They're white boys breaking the law. They're not, they're not, uh, you know, they're white collar white boys breaking the law. They know they're not going to prison. Oh, it's with Curtis. That's right. So, so not legal vice with a K. 
Curtis with a K will be on at eight o'clock tonight. And it'll be an okay show, a very good show. Does GTI have a case like MMTLP? Um, not a lawyer, I can't figure that out. Um, I think FINRA is following every legal path very carefully. So I don't think you could actually sue them. Alpine is uh, following delaying tactics in court, but it's all disclosed to the public. I'm not sure you could start a lawsuit there. I don't know the answer. Ham is an awesome dude, and he also, he's very wise. He's a wise, he's a wise arse, and uh, I think he's dedicated to winning here. But it's a tough, it's a tough road to hoe. Uh, one guy, I just posted that, this guy's, I'm not upset with it, but it, just to give you an example of, um, of, to me, jerks. This guy, uh, Bob Nextbridge, uh, put a put a comment under my name. Anyone pumping Chinese trash, like Z J Y L and Fing F N G R, are un-American scam artist shills. He's talking about me, and then he quotes me. I don't recall ever saying this. I don't tell people to buy. Maybe I did. Um, uh, you say while talking about how much the stock, quote unquote, could go up if your make believe naked shorts close. You use high pressure sales tactics to encourage bag holders. Well, um, I don't I don't agree with any of of his accusations. He looks like a day trader and he looks like a guy that joins in um with 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 the destruction of wealth. But but I think his overall point is well I don't know what his point is, but I think it's very difficult to make money trying to catch lightning in a bottle and uh, um, of all of these stocks, you know, I should do that. We need, to, I'm not going to do it now, but we need to go through, I need to go through the, I don't know, 15 stocks or 12 stocks that I said might have a chance at a um, January effect bounce. But when the whole wall street mechanism is behind a new industry that operates in the shadows, which is counterfeiting shares from New York City to Miami to Germany to the UK, Canada. Um, it's it is a, it is very hard to make money, and that uh, um, doesn't mean we can't. And I, you know, I wish I had um taken profits while while people were buying gtii up to nine dollars that would be a pump and dumper but i didn't um i wish i you know i wish i'd done it with finger too but i didn't um i wish i'd gotten out of crtd when i wanted to at a dollar fifty but I didn't because I listened to all the uh, ingredients. I don't know what other word to say. And they all seemed like they were in the middle. They could be in the middle of having a, not CRTD, but the other two in the middle of having a squeeze.
And I think some people were paid off. I'm not going to say who um, by the criminals to interrupt, to pop the balloon on that squeeze. And it worked. But it's always easy to make your decision after time goes by and looking backwards. So. All right, let me. Uh, uh, Oh, Ramon, if I caught all four squeezes, what figure would you be happy with? I don't know which four you're talking about. With ZJYL, at the risk of, um, uh, you know, the short somewhere targeting just me, that's a very narcissistic view on life. I only have a few, I have fewer than 400 shares. Um, Got to remember, I bought 15 on after the split and i had 17 before so that's 340 plus 15 i have 355 shares this is not an earth-shaking position but i think zjyl if it can go to uh, thousands of dollars a share which i heard on the phone last weekend um I'm willing to play my paltry uh, 355 shares for a play like that. You know, if it started to run, I might sell 55 shares at $1,000. And this all sounds fantasy land right now when the stock is, is what, uh, closed at 760 but I'm, I'm, you asked me if it goes, uh, sorry, if it goes to $100, I didn't mean to say 1000 If it goes to $100, I might sell 55 shares. And then the 300 that's left, maybe I'll see if it goes to 1000 You know, maybe it goes to 3000 I don't know. Um, so that's on that one. On TLO, I don't own any. On GDC, I'd be happy with, you know, $75, $50, something like that, $60. Um, I don't own very much there either. Uh, I'm, I'm more inclined to let that just ride and see if it can get, let's say, to 50 or 55. Um, finger... I'm, I'm right now, even though I believe Finger is going to have massively positive news in the near term, near term being uh, three weeks to three months. I'm not altogether convinced that it's going to have a squeeze yet, simply because the criminals seem to have it under control. And that's the thing that I, I don't think comes across. My instincts are often wrong now because the entire market is rigged. Gary Gensler is uh, not a cop on the beat. He's a cop asleep at best. And so the mice play to mix metaphors. But um, that means that a lot of my instincts aren't true when I would think. But I'm not in Finger to be a trading machine. Um, I would like to see Finger meet some of its fundamental story, start to move, and then the acceleration in the price might occur. The market tells you what stocks are moving. And anyway, so with Finger, um, I don't know what what you want to know if it squeezes. Well, assuming it squeezes and assuming there's 200 million shares to cover, um, I don't think I'd get out of Finger. I don't think I'd sell Finger at 20 or $25 because I think that's the long-term level that Finger could achieve. Um, I think it's a it's an absolutely brilliant story. 
um, if, if it started to run to 50, 75, something like that, I'd probably try to take at least my original investment off the table, if not more, and then just put the rest out at high numbers. Um, what would I be happy with? I used to want $1,000, $1,500, but I'd probably be happy just taking my original money off and then selling the rest opportunistically and just living with whatever cash is left over, you know, not regretting missing the top, not regretting anything. I just trading into the squeeze and see what happens. GTII, um, I don't think is going to squeeze in the near term. Um, and there's always a risk that um, it can get, it's not there now, but there's a lot of stories which were squeeze stories like DBMM, uh, 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 Vocal, others that with missteps can fall. I don't, I don't know where that tipping point is. They fall down and they can't get up. I don't think GTI is going to be like that. But I think that I would be inclined to sell GTII in the two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight range if it got back there and only save some of it for a much more extended rally. I hope those are the four stocks you're talking about. No, you're not out of a, um, let me see if I have, let me get my, I got to do a video on it. I, I keep saying that, but I get so tired uh, after doing these calls, I get worn out sometimes, most of the time. Um I'm just going to, I, I, I'm just going to pick an arbitrary number and it's, it's kind of ridiculous to do it this way. Uh, what one will I pick? I'll pick, uh, Okay, so Okay. The most recent, Thomas, the most recent press release and comments that I've read, I'd, I, I'm going to have to bring that press release up, sit down and study it, but I'm just going to go on the surface with what I read. I read they have 11 billion barrels, potent, a very strong indication in this new bench, they call it. Well, that is new. It doesn't include the original five or six billion barrels that might have been there or 3.2 billion. So I'm just using the 11. I'm, I'm ignoring the three to five, um, was it billion or million? Billion barrels, billion barrels, billion barrels. So I, I, Exxon bought um, that uh, Pioneer for $30 uh, 
a barrel of oil. I'm using $15. That could be really high. This number could be high. That could be high or it could be low. I don't know if you have more than one buyer. So this is all preliminary, you know, noodling. But that gives you $165 billion worth of oil divided by 165 million shares. That's $1,000 a share. There are so many pitfalls with those numbers, but on the other hand, it's entirely reasonable. All right, so let's just accept that. You can discount it as much as you want, or you can increase it. If you, just for the sake of this story, accept that NextBridge shares potentially right now have a value of $1,000 if two oil companies bid on the asset per share. And I look, I'm not saying that this will definitely be how it all works out, but I'm just if you accept that as the value, you have, by the time you get to AST, you have a 165 million shares. If you get those shares, you probably do not have a lawsuit against Wall Street, because you got your shares, you got the part of your bargain. And that might be you giving up a claim. And that might be the negative of moving your stock. However, I think you'll be able to get a claim for opportunity cost, for pain and suffering, and, and you know, whatever penalties come. are included. So in the legal process, I think you'll benefit from that. In a settlement, Wall Street settlement process, that item might be categorized as a dividend payout. And I think you'll get that here. But if Nextbridge gets AS, that's AST. If AST is full I don't I don't know the number but a, if AST is full then the broker dealers have 500 million MMTLP what do they owe you I mean, I'm I'm admitting that I'm using a number. We don't know that agreed number yet. But just for this example, if they can't give you the one for one share because they can't, well, the argument would be they owe you the thousand dollars a share. Now, do they they have to pay time cost of, of money? They have to they have to pay probably penalties. I think it'll be higher than this. They'll have to pay legal fees. So if you transfer your shares, does that mean you're out of a possibility of getting a sell? No. I, I think one of the one of the dynamics that's going to go on probably when you have a bunch of lawyers together, their main goal is being paid. Their second goal is to prove to each other how smart they are and pat them on the back and have be able to generate future clients because of all the glory they had. Their third reason for existence is make sure you get a good result. So this might be lower or higher in a settlement. I have no idea. But let's say this comes out with a $50 
that pen doesn't work anymore. That one doesn't really either. Sorry. All my pens are, all the leaves are brown on a sunny day. Oh, here, no, that one will, that one won't be erasable, I don't think. Let me see. Oh, it might be, okay. Yeah, I guess it is. So, I think there there could be a fifty dollar uh, payment to lawyers per share, hundred dollars for pain and suffering paid as a dividend, plus a thousand dollars is the value. That's my number. Is it high? Is it low? We'll find out. But Thomas, if you're sitting here at Nextbridge, the way this is going to get settled up, in my opinion, partly, is Nextbridge. Nextbridge will issue 250 million shares to the criminals to help them solve their problem. And the criminals. I'm going to have to do a video on that because I'm not getting my concept across. The criminals will pay $1,150 to Nextbridge to get uh, 250 million shares. All right. Then Nextbridge will pay the lawyers. And Nextbridge will make a $100 distribution. But I think it will be to all shareholders. So net net, next bridge will have less than a thousand dollars per issued share in their treasury department. But what does that do to the value of your shares, Thomas, at AST? Ostensibly, in my example, these shares are already worth a thousand a share. All of a sudden, there's going to be more shares out, no question. Uh, but there's going to be cash. In my, there could be two hundred and twenty-five million dollars, or is it billion? I guess it's billion. Two hundred twenty-five billion dollars worth of cash sitting in Nextbridge's coffers. Your shares are going to be really valuable, Thomas. They could they could probably go out and buy Carrizo with that money. I don't know if that's what they want to do. But Nextbridge could be the, the best funded major independent oil and gas company in North America, possibly in the world. So you're going to have valuable shares. I know it's hard. I need to do a better video because I know it's hard for you to believe me uh, that Nextbridge is valuable. But Nextbridge is valuable. How valuable, we don't know yet. Anyway, I'm going to move on because I probably probably bored everyone. Forty-four million for life. What's my take on CJYL? Uh, Ham said it'll squeeze next week. I think it'll squeeze very soon. Um, uh, the broker dealers are are wrestling with the problem now. And they're probably calling the prime brokers and saying, hey, you promised delivery on these trades. You better get it done. And they're they're probably scrambling over the weekend. If it if it were a normal environment where rules were enforced, I would say the squeeze definitely would be next week. But they might give they being compliance, they might give the best clients time. Maybe it takes a couple of weeks. 
The other dynamic is the 500 million shares that the whales are asking for delivery on. How long does that get hem and hawed? Um, I'd say it's going to squeeze in the next couple of weeks. A better question that you might be asking is how long does it take before the, you, I don't think there will be a squeeze. I think if it drags on for more than a month or so, there's probably not going to be a squeeze. But I think it's coming very soon. I think all the focus is on it. I think this pause and delay is just the back office is coming to terms. I think the criminals are selling the stock down so that when the prime brokers in compliance look, they don't see as big an issue. I think that also when the stock price is down, they start shuffling the deck and moving positions, delaying the day of reckoning. But I think the day of reckoning Wednesday, Zash Wednesday, I'd say by St. Patrick's Day. Give it until St. Patrick's Day. I think they would need to give a settlement to AST or broker shares. We were, yes, Jennifer, we were promised one-to-one -one MMTLP to Nextbridge. My argument, and if I were an attorney, I would make this argument. I'm not saying it would win. But I think not only we were promised one-to-one, -one, we were promised one-to-one -one in a non-dilutive way. So that's why I use 165 million as my denominator. I think we were promised one-to-one -one a year ago. And there were only 165 million shares outstanding, or maybe a slightly more at that time. I don't think it's fair to divide our one for one uh, by the 260 million shares that are out now. That's, you know, it's a, deba a debatable point, but that's how I feel about it. Worker, everything in the United States is sleazy now. That's true. If you want to leave it in your retirement account, uh, K. Vinoy, then I think what you need to do is at least look up on, on Nextbridge's website under their facts, frequently asked questions. I think you have to somehow notify Nextbridge that you want to opt in in terms of um, I can't remember the name of it that that additional property where uh, Greg McCabe is distributing ten percent override. I, or 10% working interest. I can't remember. You can look it up. Hey, the one. So the kingdom of LA comes in and he's saying, if I were not in litigation with Fidelity, I would move my shares to American stock transfer. Kingdom of LA, KLA. Adios, Ryan. Um, oh, I think people would vote for him. Yeah. But I, I, I know he's not a. <laughs> Let me put it this way he's not a Hillary supporter. Joni loves, I don't know how to pronounce that. All right, C-A-U-D. Uh, what I understand is happening in C-A-U-D is I think it's hit its low. My friend, uh, a very 
perceptive financial analyst um, who used to work at the American Stock Exchange believes that we need to see CAUD trade above around 225, 240 a share. And then all the computer algorithms that masturbate with each other all day long going down, they'll start masturbating with each other going up. I, I don't really buy the theory that um, the trading is, to me, if you're selling stocks during the day that don't exist, it's just as illegal as otherwise. But his view is there's good clients who sell shares of CAUD during the day they don't have. As it goes down, the algorithm allows them to buy that back and they book pennies and dimes and nickels down, down, down. And it's all algorithmic. It's all legal because they're good clients. It's all commission revenue and you can't stop it and they never fail to deliver. And so somehow this is good. And he's not saying this, I'm, I'm being in general saying it, uh, that this is somehow good for the US, US economy. I don't buy that. I don't think that it's, that does happen, but I don't think that's what's going on in CAUD. But anyway, that's one idea and it looks like we're going up. Um, I think Upsoft 88, Aubrey Advisors, this is my opinion, and I, it was either Aubrey Advisors, uh, Shadron Placement Agents, maybe Brownstone, I, I don't know, the lawyers, Polar, one of them or all of them, uh, were in on this sting operation from the start. But, but I think what destroys the game is when a company has revenues and has cash flow and has profits, they stop doing it. And CAUD, I think, has an excellent new uh, CEO. Not, uh, and I think the old CEO was great too. But the this new CEO, Peter Boards, and particularly Elizabeth DeMars, on the board. And then they brought in uh, uh, COO and CFO and, and somebody else and an advisory committee that kicks butt. And here's what I think's going on, Upsoft 88. What the criminals want, what Aubrey Speck advisors clients want, and possibly Aubrey Speck, in my judgment. They want to drive the stock, keep it under a dollar. So those three or four companies, which already agreed to merge with Data Logic, the heart of Saturday night, the heart of CAUD, they already agreed to do that at the $10, $12 level. Well, now when the stock went under a dollar, the criminals are hoping, one, the CEOs of the other companies say, no, we don't, we're no longer interested because you promised $10, now it's one dollar. That's their goal. It busts the it busts the story. The other goal they have is that it they the deal has to change. So instead, I'm making it up. Instead of issuing a million shares at $10. To get the deal done, you have to issue 10 million shares at $1. So they want to destroy the per share value of any good news, revenues, assets, brain power that comes to CAUD. That's what the criminals are doing. And shame on them. Shame on them. They're, they're wealthy men and, and, and some women, but mostly men. 
what I think is happening now at CAUD, I think Peter Boards understands, at least understands this dynamic mostly. I do not think Peter Boards attends, and I, I could be wrong, intends to issue any more shares in a sizable way at a dollar. <coughs> If if he does, we'll just have to live with it. But I don't think he's going to. He does have a burn rate. But but I think he's going to merge into at least one of these companies, if not all four, at values or with the mechanism which allows the price per share that they receive in CAUD stock to be higher. Maybe not right now. Maybe it's down the road. Maybe it's after three months of operating. Maybe it's a deal to combine operations. And in six months, we'll set the price based on revenues, cash flow, and earnings. And these companies coming in have cash flow, have earnings, have uh, revenues and growth. So that's, I think, uh, the new CEO is busting out of the constraints that the con criminals try to trap uh, companies in. And it, my opinion, it's my prayer more, maybe, he's not going to dilute the benefit of these three or four companies which agreed to combine when the stock was $12. And the only difference between now and today is the criminals at Polar, Aubrey Advisors, and uh, Chandron, my judgment, and Polar, I said it already, fraudulently depressed the price. I think Peter Boards recognizes, and it's his job, he has the credibility to tell the companies that are merging in, I'm not doing it at a dollar. That price is a fraud. We agreed $10, maybe I'll do it at seven, something like that. I think that's what's coming, and I think it's going to be excellent when it comes. I also know, Upsoft, that Peter Boards is going to be at the NA NASDAQ Tuesday morning, I guess, doing the equivalent of ringing their bell. So there's going to be publicity. And then finally, it's my understanding there is a large hedge fund. They normally don't do this. In this space, who, because of their relationship, with Peter Boards, even though the stock's a dollar, normally they'd want it maybe at ten dollars or seven or twelve. But remember, the criminals drove the price down. There is no relation between the price and the value of the company as long as Peter Boards and Elizabeth Demar stay strong and refuse to do business down at a dollar a share. Maybe the compromise is $7 instead of 12 or 10. But as they agglomerate, roll up these extra companies and revenue grows and they go to profitability, the shorts will run away like cockroaches under a refrigerator when you turn on the kitchen light. That's all they are, are cockroaches. So anyway, um, I think there's a big buyer in CAUD, and I don't think they're finished buying. And I think good news is coming. And, and having said that, you have to be aware of the risks. The risks are that that board continues to listen to the two people from Aubrey Advisors who are on the board. And they continue to listen to Shadron and maybe Brownstone is involved. They got to stop listening to those people. They got to say, you know what? It's just me.
I can't deal with crazy. I'm not saying you're crazy, but I have no defenses against crazy. I'm, I'm uncomfortable here. I'm not listening and you're gone. And then they have to do what they know how to do. Elizabeth and Peter both and the rest of the team. I just don't trust. I don't trust anyone from Aubrey Advisors. None. And they're on the board. Those two, I would. I would I would tell them they sorry it hasn't worked out. We did our side in good faith, and you guys are professionals. You've done a hundred spacs before, and this is what you do to your clients. I'm sorry. If you're here to protect your investment, my judgment as CEO, you already stripped 150 million out of the market. You and your clients. So just. Don't let the door slam on your your rear end on the way out and take your smiles off the website, my website. But anyway, I think we have good news ahead for CAUD. The risk is the board will do further financings or whatever down here. I can't stop it. All I can do is try to educate them. The other risk is um uh until caud gets purchase on its revenue its cash flow and its earnings i believe more counterfeiting of shares will occur now in respect to this highly intelligent thoughtful and honest uh, uh forensic expert financial expert who used to work at the Amex, he believes it's algorithmic selling back and forth. They start by selling shares they don't have in the beginning of the day and they cover it at the end of the day. And it always evens up. There might be a short position. He believes probably much, you know, the good parts of what I've just said, you got to trigger it over 240 a share or less. Um, and then the buy algorithms term positive. I don't think that kind of rally will be sustainable, whether it goes to $250 or $25 or $50, unless Peter Boards and Liz Elizabeth DeMars heed my warnings. Because, But I'm not saying I'm smarter than they are at all. Th those are two extraordinarily successful people. So Epsoft, I think CAUD, which has a low float, my opinion, a massive short, has every possibility for a squeeze. Um, uh, RCRT is go logic and I don't know the specifics, but RCRT is a shell, and GoLogic is merging in their fintech business, it's all announced, into RCRT. And I'm not fluent in the number of shares, but I that's almost a billion dollar asset. Um, I don't know the revenues off of it or anything like that. And I think they already did their reverse split. I don't know. But I think that is still underway. I don't know if it's imminent or it's still going to be delayed, but we're already in February, so it could be happening. Then GoLogic, which trade who trades by appointment, uh, has some assets. But they're going to acquire companies too. So those two stories, particularly GoLogic, G-O-L-Q, are exciting as well. I just I don't really have much to say on it because I ask, but I never hear any information. All right, how Williams moved his MMTLP out of the IRA into his individual account. I just initiated that myself. As you know, I 
I've been saying I want to keep it there and go through it with you. And but I just finally call. I'm going to do the same thing. You did miss him, and he missed you. Okay, so logic, um, logic. Uh, I don't know where it closed, but I, let's say it's three, two and a half cents, two and a half cents. I think logic. I'll, I'll just go how I understand it. I think logic is going to reduce its outstanding shares downward. I don't know to what number they 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 were nine something like ninety three million or ninety seven million, but the reason they can reduce it, as I understand it, is because um, some of those shares were out to get deals done to pay people, and since data logics moved over I, I part of what i'm saying to you upsoft is my projection so i can't give you a full answer but i'm going to assume they're going to get it down maybe to this number okay 100 million um i don't know it doesn't really matter it's a shell they don't need to raise money they don't need to issue any more shares it doesn't really matter. I believe they are. Going to be acquired by a company. In a reverse merger, I'm going to use a low number. company that has a value of 400 million. All right, now Upsoft, let me quickly give you the risks on that valuation. I think it's gonna be higher. I think that value is gonna be half a billion or 600 million, but let's just go with this. Because every, everything always disappoints. Let's just go with a lower number, but let me give you the risks. The risks to the story, in my opinion, is if that value is projected, that's a projected value, is it believable? Is it believable? Is it backed up by revenues? Is it backed up by uh, contracts? Is it backed up by whatever it needs to be backed up by? That's a risk because the shorts will destroy it if this isn't rock solid. The other is if the new company needs to do a financing and they go with the bad guys, no way to know. I don't know who the CEO is. I don't know her logic or brain power. Uh, I don't know. No. Those are the risks. But what's the upside? What's the upside for logic? Let's say this deal is announced next week or the following. Why am I saying? By the end of February. It was supposed to be announced in November or December. Let's just say by the end of February. Logic might get 15% of that. Might be less, but I'm just giving you an example. So that gets to... $60 million in value. 
If you divide that by 100 million shares, in my example, that's 60 cents a share for logic. 60 cents a share for logic. The stock's trading at two and a half cents. Two and a half cents. That something's going to happen. Stock's trading at two and a half cents. <laughs> now, will it go to 60? All right, let me explore that very quickly. Could there be a short squeeze? Yes. Could it go to a dollar? A dollar fifty? Higher? I think so. I think you should you could get a little trade to get out at a dollar or a dollar fifty, dollar twenty-five. Is it I, I would give this 20% odds, not high odds, but it's not out of the question. What's more likely? What's more likely is you're going to see selling of shares bit FUD by the shorts. But will they be selling at two and a half? No. So the question is, how high, because they many will want to buy back their trade, how high will they let it go? And I don't know that answer. Um, a lot of it depends on the credibility of the value uh, valuation model. Um, it should be either a NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange company. It, there is a reverse mer uh, split along with the reverse merger. There, there, there's, as far as I know, no financing. Although, you know, a new CEO, you never know. Um, so that that number, it could be a twenty-five dollar stock. I think it could be a forty dollar stock because if you do the 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 reverse merger, you'll have about 10 million shares out, maybe 12 million shares out on a $400 million value. It could be a 40, 35, $40 stock on the NYSE. And we, if it's profitable and has a great story and that has cash, we don't have to do anything else at that point. Now, the other question is, I heard they may restrict our ability to sell shares. Well, they can't, as far as I know, do that right out of the gate. They have to give us a record date. So you might be in a position where you say, you know what, I don't want to wait 90 days or six months. I just want to get out. So you might sell at five cents or seven cents or 10 cents or 15 cents just to have a quick trade, which is all I ever suggested anyway in December. Um, I don't, having said this bit about restriction, in my mind, I cannot conceptually see how they can restrict the shares in trading in total of the new company. I, I just don't see it. They're reverse merging into a NASDAQ company that's already trading. I don't know how they restrict the shares. Maybe they just restrict our shares and they don't restrict the shares issued to the new company. Or maybe they restrict part of the shares. I, I don't know the mechanics of it. But if you restrict all shares, you're not trading. So I... I there's something I would they have to educate us on it. Anyway, I think logic will go up soon, as soon as next week, but I think by the end of the month.
I'm too unsure to move my MMTLP and Roth to AST. Well, Donna, one of the negatives of doing it is you no longer have, um, let's say you moved out of your Roth and you're not able to get into AST and there's a settlement. My assumption is that settlement will be taxable. <laughs> so you lose that. That's a risk. That is a risk. So one reason to stay in your Roth is if there's a cash settlement, it's tax deferred. It's deferred until you take dis distributions in your Roth. Um, the, other, the other thing is um, Well, that's about the only risk I can see, really. That's about the only risk I can see is once you move it out, you might not, not get it into AST. Um, I, I believe, and Donna, this is my interpretation, I believe uh, if there is a cash settlement provided by the brokerage community, it will involve the issuance of shares from NextBridge, I think. They will receive capital. The only thing that interrupts that understanding, they seem hell-bent on doing a deal with my friend at Roth Capital, who probably unknowingly could be a front for the shorts anyway. That deal might be at a lower number, but either method, Nextbridge is issuing more shares, which I think are going to be help the shorts cover. Nextbridge is going to have cash. So my point is, shares held at AST have the value of the oil they've already discovered, and then will have the value of cash they raise at a minimum. So that is valuable. But if it's in your Roth and it's a settlement of MMTLP, you'll actually have cash. That's just different uh, apples to oranges, as they say. Um, so that's a, a difference. Um, I've been very unsure about moving, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, uh, but it doesn't mean I'm right. Grow up, Arthur. You'll make a fine adult. I killed a man when I was 12 years old. Well, if you were 12, you probably didn't know there was a law against that. How old are you, Nunya? None of us have tomorrow. Yeah, that's true. Ask your CPA. That's true. I'm not a... Uh, tax advisor at all um my my main reason because i would love to leave it in my ira i'd love to get it have it grow there and i know i'm taking a, a risk that i might not get into ast but i'd rather know for a certainty that I own shares of what I perceive to be an excellent private company with a team that has clearly shown they're on shareholders side than just have a chit that I've got to worry about how lawyers settle it out for me. But I'm, I'm, I've already shown you, I believe that a settlement is going to be a massive number. And I don't think it'll break Wall Street's back. I think Wall Street is fighting it, not because they're going to lose a lot of money, because the money's just going to move from, what, Wells Fargo over to uh, UB, UBS. Um, I just don't think they want Charlie Grasparino to be embarrassed. They want to protect him. 
All right, I'm going to try to. That's a good one, Heidi. Let's all call the SEC on Monday. You know, uh, Lent is coming up. We could make it our Lenten uh, uh, commitment to call the SEC once a day for Lent. I'll call those forkers. A lot of people already made money in ZJYO. Yeah, they might have. Um, I didn't sell any of mine. I think it, if it breaks $15, it can go to 100 And I've, I've already said I'm only going to sell a tiny bit. I, I might sell it at 50 whatever. I'm going to try to take my original money out and then just let the rest, rest run for free. I think they'll pay a lot. I'm not trying to say they won't. I was just answering the question, The question: what would I do? And that's what I would do. Um, I totally disagree about you nor anyone else will ever make me buy or sell anything I don't want to. I won't. I'm grown. Oh, the guy that wrote me? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Cindy Lou, who uh, 500 to 1,500, finger 100 to 200. Those are good numbers if it happens. I always have to put in that added sentence, if it squeezes, if it squeezes. Those are good numbers. I think finger could go to $100 or more within five years just based on its fundamentals. Take care. Hey, Frank. <laughs> I hope they subpoena gas bank. <laughs> they won't. They call him a journalist. I've never been a huge fan of Tucker uh, Carlson, but that's a journalist. He, he goes out of his comfort zone and he goes and takes an interview with the other side. What do I think of Toys R Us? I don't know anything. I think it's a, quite a difficult business model when you can buy all of your toys on Amazon, but uh, it used to be a great company. It was a stock that was always recommended as a buy. I don't know. I'll see if I can find out something. If they can't give one to one, it's a definite problem. Hey, Peter. Z Z Zunia. Zunia. I have a friend that has that, uh, that name, and I think he's originally from Colombia. I think he's Colombian originally, or Costa Rica. I can't remember. Fidelity is out of expert shares. It's entirely possible. I think Fidelity is where, I mean, it's my opinion, but I think Fidelity is where the problem is it's most massive. I think Fidelity is the um, heart of the problem. There's, there's 90... No, 104 brokers, 94 brokers, dealers. I bet there's only five or six or 10 that have a big problem. And I would bet, I'd be willing to bet that Fidelity is number one, certainly in the top three. My clicker isn't working, sorry. Hey, Lafayette. Yeah, I can see it going Monday, but I think it probably will take longer. Why? Because when I talk to my back office for my small position, he did say they had resolved the
putting in orders issue and the trading issue, but it could take two or three days. That's what he told me before we, I was on the phone for 20, 25 minutes before he came back after talking to our corporate action department. So it, I think it could be two or three days, but I think Monday or Tuesday, I think if there are honest uh, broker dealers, um, they've called the other side of the trades and there might be, uh, remember IBKR is the big actor here, but there may be phone calls Monday morning to brokers, institute, you know, whoever is handling the account, you have until 2 p.m. to bring in to settle the trade or we're buying you in to bring in real shares or we're buying it in. And that could start Monday, but I wouldn't be surprised that it takes until Tuesday or Wednesday. But it's, you know, that's a prediction, Lafayette. I, I, it's not a promise. I'll try to do a video. Um, yeah, I think a uh, finger easily could be 15 or to 50, but um, they're under pressure from the criminals, but I think they can get through it. It Finger is a great company and they've got a terrific CEO. Terrific. Joni loves Chachi. I don't know who that is. Happy Saturday, Cliff. HNRC is a perfect example. Uh, Brendan and Alice Fun Investor Adventures. That's a very nice picture. What I can see of it, very nice picture. You don't have to transfer until the S1 is approved, which is not now. That's true. Um, you know, in life, things go slowly and then they accelerate. So I think you're right. But if there's a mood that everyone wants to rush in, you may run out of time. But um, you're absolutely right. The S1 has to be approved first. Um, I agree with that too, that if you're in proce process or uh, progress, progress, um, next bridge will honor it, but that'll probably need a better definition. Don't worry, the catalyst is struck. HNRC dividend still waiting to trade it. You're talking about WDHI. Um, Steve, I, I mean, I can't do anything about it, but that was issued in May of last year. Um, I have a placeholder in my account. Um, according to Frank, uh, Kristen, uh, the SEC is still approving it. So the delay is, is with the SEC. Now he said in November interview that he expected it could, would be ready to trade by the end of December. Well, it isn't, uh, there's not much we can do about it. Uh, he owns, or or HNRC owns, 17% of WHDI. So I don't think he's going to do anything to destroy value. The historic asset cost, the, the price that which was paid for the assets they own, including artificial in, intelligence, which, for example, helps with the menus 
at fast food restaurants like uh, Jack in the Box or Hardee's, one of those. Um, all of those assets are booked at acquisition cost, not current value, which might be higher since I assume the businesses are growing. He did say that he it, they're involved in making additional acquisitions, which he was not allowed to speak about because they are in process, progress, process and it's a quiet period. So the, his, the historic cost value of the shares is $3.50. If he is indeed adding accretive acquisitions, if in fact the underlying companies are growing in revenues, if in fact it's a modest and a tight uh, uh, a number of shares outstanding, which is my understanding, you there are people that think the stock will trade as high as four or five, six dollars after it's starting trading. Now I'm skeptical because I think you, Steve, um, are an example. You're going to want to sell it, so I think there'll be some downward pressure on selling, but we'll just have to see. It's a limbo that you can be frustrated about. I can be frustrated about. You can be mad at me about. You can be mad at, at HNRC about. But in my case, I'm still expecting to realize $1.37 a share in that dividend because every two shares got one share of the dividend. I'm I'm hopeful that I'll get two dollars or two fifty a share in value. So I'm waiting. Well, it's bad. Oh, I'm waiting. Well, things take time. It, you know, back before this generation. If you ordered, well, maybe it's a little bit longer than that. But if you ordered a book, you could wait three weeks for it to arrive. If you ordered a new, uh, you know, a new quilt, it could take a month. Now everything is, well, I want it right away, right away. Well, I don't know what to say to that. It's disappointing that it's come May, it'll be a year that that dividend hasn't been distributed. In fact, the original X date was in December last year. So it's been over a year from the original uh, distribution date. That's disappointing, but I don't think it, I think that's the process. That's not HNRC. I don't know. I don't know what else to say to you. They want to fight crypto, but they fine they fine uh, Goldman Sachs three million dollars for sixty million. If that's my, I think that's right. Uh, trades made with an inadvertent missing line of code. Inadvertent. <laughs> they charge him three million dollars. And then they're going to come to the taxpayer for two and a half billion. Why don't they charge Goldman Sachs a billion dollars? Why? Because Gary Gensler is there to protect Goldman Sachs. The rest is all for show. You're 107? My dog is about that old. Yeah, I think people did take a, a lot of people. Yeah, I, I, I saw the hit piece. I put it up on uh, Twitter. I think Finger is a great story. And I, I think the CEO is absolutely tremendous. Um, he is a man 
and his whole team, by the way. I'm not, I'm not dismissing the rest of the organization, but I think he's a man you can hitch your wagon to. And I hope to own finger for 10 years, 20 years. <laughs> Nunya, I thought you were going to die. Let me see. What did you say? I can't remember. But didn't you say you're, gonna, you're not going to live that long? And I have to answer a story about a lamp? I'll tell you the story. You already got your shares. You were asking about price. Let me see what you asked. Oh, what price? Um, I I think it's going to go to thirty. Thirty-five, forty thousand dollars pre-split, pre-forward split. So let's use let's use the forty thousand. That's two thousand dollars a share. And I can't remember. Let me look it up. Uh, let's see if it's here. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. All right, so let me find check a different one. Um, can't they just give the numbers? I just want the number, sorry, right here, Britannica. Britannica. Rule Britannica. Britannica rules the waves. Anyway... I, I'm going to say, I can't find it. Just, I don't need all the explanation. Just the numbers, please. Ah, oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Anyway, I would say two, $2,000 is as high as it's going to, $2,500. I'll say $2,500 is the peak. How's that? All right, this um, this lamp, uh, years ago, my sister lived in San Francisco, and she called me and said, Bill, I'm coming to visit for thanks, or Chris, Thanksgiving, Christmas. And I don't want to stay at dad's. Can I stay at your house? I said, sure. And then just before she came, she said, uh, I'm, I'm, I've sold everything. I'm leaving San Francisco. Can I move in with you? <laughs> well, okay, sure. I had a girlfriend then. Really, I did. My dad said, you can't have two women in the same house. But anyway, um, So when she was there, um, she lived in downtown San Francisco, which is a great town. Uh, uh, she didn't know anybody. So I took her to the bottom line. I took her to a couple of places. I tried to, and she's an introvert. She's not really someone who likes to, you know, get too many things going. But she has the courage to try new places. So anyway, I took her to this uh, restaurant bar down below called uh, Dino's, I think. But it's at uh, Floriana's. And Floriana's, frankly, is a prim primarily a gay bar. 
but I had gone on a date with a woman I, I was in love with to the restaurant upstairs uh, without knowing it was a gay bar. But it, I loved the place, Italian food. And then downstairs is this little bar that was just amazing. And uh, uh, a guy, a friend, I won't say his name here, but a friend ran that bar. He now owns a bar and he's great. He's a fantastic bartender, fantastic. Uh, anyway, he had, had designed it and it was just a nice, and my sister loved it. So anyway, uh, I, it ended up she would go there on an evening once or twice a week and she started making friends and um, introducing them to me. She'd have me drop by. I, She met a, uh, uh, the, the bartender's mother was a beauty queen from Nicaragua, Nicaragua. Wonderful woman. I met the father too, an ambassador. She said to me once, if you're trying to meet a girl, this is not the place to do it. <laughs> But anyway, I I didn't, and I would try to be there, but it, there's an odd testosterone level going on, and it, it I would go, stay a little while, and leave. And anyway, there was one gentleman there that my sister made friends with, who now lives in Georgia with his husband. I can say his first name. His first name was Ralphie, and he's a great guy. He was great to talk to. He never once was upset that I'm straight, and he's a dear, dear friend of my sister. And she lived in this uh, nice apartment on, um, anyway, this, I won't tell you exactly where it was. And so Ralphie, took it upon himself to design her kitchen and her hallway in a very kitsch, uh, inviting way. And he got uh, chandeliers, he got uh, uh, shelves, he got, uh, you know, rugs, he got different kind of lighting. And he got a table where two or three people could sit around and share a bottle of wine and some cheese, turn the lights low, and he bought that lamp. That's where that lamp comes from. He bought it and gave it to my sister. Years later, uh, I, I'm not gonna go in a long story, I don't want to, but I helped her uh, find a place where she now owns. Uh, and we, we've kind of flipped our experience 100%. I guess that's what God wanted. But she she's always very neat, very organized, and she downsized, and she gets rid of things. And in the, the table and everything, um, she gave to me. She gave me that lamp. And uh, when I moved here, much against my, my desires, I was moving everything myself. This was, you know, either early basement, late living room, middle, middle uh, second floor. And it ended up here. And I just put it behind my, uh, behind my uh, thing for a little bit of, Something to look at. That's the story. Not very interesting. Uh, my sister gave it to me, but it was given to her by a dear friend of hers. And uh, I used to keep it in my house. I used to keep it. I had a stereo, speakers. I didn't really have albums. I had the CDs and I had booze there and a couple of seats. And I kept that where my stereo was and I would turn it on whether I was by myself or somebody was there, I could quickly switch CDs. 
and I had painted my living room. I did a great job with it. It had a whole thing as a fireplace that had a whole flavor of warmth. But anyway, that's all I have left. I want it all and I want it now. I've never heard that song from Queen. I just know that one, Mama. I killed a man, put a gun up to his head, pulled the trigger, now he's dead. And Mama, ooh. I use E-Trade. Um, the guy didn't say he couldn't do it when I called yesterday. But as I'm thinking it through, I don't know that he actually gave me the affirmative. So I'll find out on Monday. If one guy all, owns all the lit sh shares on T, although he can't bid up, I, how do you figure? <laughs> the, he can buy. He can buy. I don't, I, PS71, you don't understand. You don't understand. Somebody sold 300,000 shares yesterday that don't exist. They're counterfeit. They're short. If they keep selling on Monday, they it might be half a million shares. I understand the entire float, the out, entire outstanding shares is a million shares. He bought them all. He's not selling. So in a normal marketplace, Compliance would come to the institutional broker and say, hey, you've got to settle. Where's the other side of this trade? When well, Gary Gensler's markets, complete indifference. There is no settlement. Uh, there's a quote here. I can't remember the exact page. I wonder if it's right at the beginning. I mean, let's just read a little bit of this. Let's just start in the the intro. I've done it before, PS1. Dr. Susan Trimblath, part one, the opening. Um, investors and the entrepreneurs they support are being harmed by fails to deliver and stock lending borrowing under rules approved by the SEC. Neither the government regulators or the financial industry self-regulatory organizations are capable of correcting themselves. This is the definition of regulatory crisis. If you are not aware of the problem, this book will show that there are failures to deliver securities to settle trades throughout the global system. Although the data and examples in this book are primarily U.S., it happens everywhere that the financial industry includes self-regulatory organizations. Some of the fails to deliver last for years in the United States because the centralized clearing and settlement organization provides that fails to settle on a given day will be resubmitted with a new settlement day the next day, ad infinitum. No regulation in the United States requires the borrower of shares to close out long-term 
outstanding stock loan and settlement failures. Numerous companies have been the subject of aggressive trading attacks that are enabled by the lack of action by regulators. Aggressive trading tactics such as naked short selling can at a minimum impair access to capital and at the worst have driven small companies to ruin. The DTCC chooses not to resolve or buy in trades where the seller fails to deliver the shares they sold. DTCC and its subsidiaries can and do change their own rules and procedures after notice to the public. Their rules allow them to credit their members with an entitlement for undelivered shares, which allows their members to credit the account representing the buying investor in a failed trade. This process creates extra shares of stock of public companies all within the rules. The DTC turned to the SEC and received approval for a rule to prohibit companies from taking action to protect themselves. The DTCC approached the SEC for rulemaking to protect the DTCC's members from having to close out failed trades by forcing an open market purchase in a process, process known as a buy-in. The situation is getting worse. The more rules that are put in place to support this flawed infrastructure, the more the risk created by a buildup of unsettled trades in the system will look like the asbestos story of the 21st century. They say that they prevent trades, they say that they prevent trades from failing by enabling trades to fail. <laughs> That's the quote I was looking for. She started, and this is depressing, she started in 2003, and then she says, the current system may not survive. I'm going to, I've, I've re already read this several times. I'm going to have to read it again. Maybe I'll do a video just on this. Maybe I'll try to get her to come, on, come live. She doesn't seem to do that, but maybe I can. DLO is all the evidence. Well, Ham said I'm completely out of my mind. Ham thinks it's going to settle this year. But I think if it goes the legal route, the, the uh, uh, owner, Angelos, the owner of the Orioles, the Peter Angelos route, it's going to take at least a decade. Look at Alpine, how long they've stretched out. Um, I had a long, I saw the list of things I wanted to do with finger profits that never happened. My, uh, my goal right now is I'm going to buy a new computer setup. 
I want to get my eye fixed. And uh, uh, depending on how much it is, I'd like to start either a company or an investment vehicle that I can start um, attracting investors. Um, I probably will, you know, take care of some things, have some cash. Um, but if my dog is still alive, I'm going to stay here. If he's not alive, I'm going to see about living somewhere else. And that, I mean, that's the extent of my plans. I will probably try to help a couple of people. I give up. I don't want to. Um... <laughs> J.G. Wentworth, isn't that a bad advertisement? Put a gun upside my head, his head. Mama. Ooh. Okay, let's see. <laughs> All right, goofy little dog, goofy little dog, 6.30, God. See, the thing is, I always get Battery worn out 70%. after these. Connected to you, feels like Because I got to go walk my dog. Aww. Who couldn't be better than this? This is a Russian dog. <laughs> Beauty. How about this one? It's a different one. Gosh. I'm sure that can get annoying. It's a weird world. The, the fudsters and the fraudsters uh, destroy, they break the rules and they destroy market values. And then they have the audacity to blame it on people like Cam uh, and others that are working so hard. Uh, it's a tough, it's a tough um, game, but I tell you, you've seen You've seen some of these stocks explode upward. So hopefully one of ours will do it. I think the best shot right now is ZJYL. That's just my opinion. And I agree with him. The next one will go would be GDC. And my, I'm sure my computer's overheating. My computer's my computer is freezing, so I'll try to say good night. Pharaoh's asking how high is it going to happen by end of the year for finger. 
I think Finger's going to have excellent news over the next six weeks to I think finger oh god sick of it sick of my computer lucky boy I'm sick of my computer we got to get a new one I think finger's going to have excellent news over the 6 weeks to 3 months so we'll see what happens to the price I think uh uh the research report which you can look up I'll try to go back over it again uh from Roth from uh, benchmark says it's worth five dollars last year and the news has gotten better so yeah i think it's i think it's i think it can i think it can i think right now there's a lot of selling that's false in that stock and uh you know Anyway, yes, I think it can go to 15. Will it do it by the end of the year? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, it could happen sooner. Uh, and it could go higher by the end of the year. It's just hard to know. <laughs> you painted your bathroom? A friend of mine and I went down to, um, we did Christmas and Easter once. Uh, something, it was called something like that, but it was Christmas for Easter or something like that. But it's a bunch of white people from, as it turned out, I mean, it wouldn't have to be this way, but it's what it was. A bunch of white people from the suburbs coming down to, you know, a, a, a neighborhood in town in DC, which people weren't as well off, and uh, a bunch of do gooders. So, my friend uh, Colin was his name. He invited me. I said, All right, I'll do it. I'm like, I always really liked him. I was like, Darn it, I don't really want to do this. But we show up at the house, there's probably 30 or 40 of us or more and everyone comes you know dressed to and they, they they're all dressed like they're going to a picnic they they come late they they come to, we got there early and the different the whole idea is you take a house and in a day you fix everything the owner wanted and you get it done in a day well Everyone shows up, listen to what she asked for. She was a older woman, very large woman, um, very nice. And uh, then everyone goes and gets coffee and donuts. And they come back and they sit around talking and chatting. Well, Colin and I, Cindy, picked, we picked the bathroom to paint it for her because that's just, it seemed like we could get it done. It was a horrible color. We had to scrape first and sand and do all that and start working. But um, it wasn't a small bathroom. It was pretty large. And we started to work. We didn't go get coffee. We didn't get donuts. Well, then people start working. And then it's lunchtime. So they break for lunch. We didn't break for lunch. We kept working. And, uh, you, you know, you had... You had uh, uh, you know all the things you have to do with pain. So then we worked through the afternoon and they took a break at two or three o'clock or four o'clock for our drinks. And then they finish up and it's six, six thirty, and we're still working. And everyone and and the thing is they didn't finish any job, and we wanted to finish the job because why would you start something without finishing? Well, it comes around eight o'clock. And um, this woman turns out to be a grandmother. 
and her house is full of people at eight o'clock, um, everywhere from 30 years old down to 12 years old and five years old. But there's able-bodied uh, human beings. And Colin, you know, I was willing to go to midnight and finish, but Colin had a wife and, and uh, Colin was president of my fraternity. He was a Navy officer and an attorney. And he just said, you know, we're going to, we've got to, let's get to a stopping, let's get to a stopping point and we'll give it to that man there who looked to be around 26 years old and capable. And we, we, so we finished the last coat of paint, but it had to dry and a final coat had to be put on. And then we would have, but anyway, so Colin said to him, uh, look, um, could you come in? Here's where we are. And we're not going to be able to finish tonight. And, um, uh, and the, and the young man goes, that's all right. That's okay. Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> Colin burst out laughing with his infectious laugh. I never forgot it. He said, no, you don't understand. We're leaving. We're going to finish up this coat. We're going to leave. We're going to clean up, but we're going to leave the paint wet so you can come in and finish the, the final coat, and then it's all ready to go. <laughs> but I never forgot that, Cindy Lou. We painted that bathroom, and it's dread, It's a dreadful job. So you should be proud of yourself. <laughs> we then walked through the house. Every single job was half done. It was so embarrassing. But the do-gooders felt good about themselves. All right. I, I My computer's freezing. I'm trying to get your new comments. All right, Lucky, we're going to go. We're going to go. Um, you're not my mother, though you want to be. Kenny Boy is. Kenny Boy's getting rich, and he jumped ahead, but the real people are Goldman Sachs. And and the banks and the and the Federal Reserve and it's and if you notice uh, that New York Community Bank that went down, I think it was number twenty seven in the country, twenty nine, twenty six in the country. But the top thirty banks in the country, J P Morgan Chase is at the top. And he usually gets the chance to acquire the troubled banks. He acquires the good assets and he puts the bad assets over on the taxpayer. You call that capitalism? It's not capitalism. That is a world run by the banksters. I forget the quote by the general. I wish I could remember it. But he said, our country is run by the banks, the, uh, you know, the military industrial complex, the, the military firms, and the, and the pharmaceutical companies. I think you can add in big agriculture to that. That's the world. And uh, we got to fight. We have to fight back. Oh, God, Pharaoh. Pharaoh, on uh, February 5th, I can't do the uh, dates, but on uh, Wednesday, of last week, 
let me give you the dates so that you you can organize your your uh, thoughts on the the I guess it was the last day of January January 31st I did an interview with Martin Shen CEO of Finger FNGR it is now February 10th so it's approximately 10 days later. What in the world would make me think that the six, roughly six developments that are, were in work, on the day I sat with him 10 days ago, that I would change my mind 10 days later. I don't understand it. Why would you ask? Do I still see the potential for a handful of news announcements still? Why would you ask that? Are you trying to collect? Are you trying to create a documentary evidence that I'm, I'm making promises and then it's not happening or something because I'm not making promises. I'm giving you my best effort of information that I see and the CEO can't talk about everything. But Pharaoh, I'll go through it again. I guess it's just got to go through it again. September 11th. Finger announced or or filed a shelf registration statement for three hundred million dollars, and named Univest as its banker in that document. They did a sub filing for twenty five million dollars because that's how it was written. The re shelf registration still needed a further sub filing to actually get approval for that extra money. It is now. February 10th, so that is October, November, December, January, four months, four times three, 120 days, maybe a little more if my arithmetic's wrong. It's basically 120 days. That's perfectly normal for an investment bank. There's been no announcement that they've backed away from that. Okay, Pharaoh. Why would a company issue a registration statement covering 300 million? Acquisition? Funding current business or funding new business? That's basically the reasons. Yes, I think that's still in process. I think you're going to see an announcement that involves that relationship somehow you're going to see earnings there is further work ahead all of this we've gone through before pharaoh uh, uh on the big data side i think you could see some progress in that area my, that, that they're in stage two, they might move to stage three. Will it be in a day or two? It could take months, but I think it's coming. Monetizing big data is a big deal. Do you still think it's going to happen? I know you just did the interview a, a week ago, but in your opinion, is it still going to happen? Yes, I think so. Uh, as you know, they uh, announced they acquired outside of China the Netflix of, of uh, Southeast Asia. I think there's progress there. I think they're going to, going to have tremendous uh, crossover 
in their revenues and earning and cash flow such that they have earnings. And finally, um, I think there'll be new businesses. So, Farrell, could you obsessively ask me a question again on the same subject again and on the same thing again? Let me make it clear to you, Farrell. As many times as you ask me and as many times as I answer, I am making projections, not promises. And I'm doing my best. Wow, that's a good job. Um, we were using we were using oil based uh, semi gloss, so it was it was tough. Sounds like you're using the same paint. That's great. Good job. You do. That's great. I don't know Toys R Us. I'll write that down. I got to go walk my dog. Let me just let me just look that one up. One penny? Point zero zero eight. Is this a bankruptcy story? No bid, no ask, uh, but it traded. So it opened at 0 0.0063, previous close 0 0.0052. It's been as low as 0 0.001 and as high as 20 cents. The volume was 3 million. The average volume is 3 million. Market cap is 8 million. Shares outstanding, 1 billion shares, 1 billion shares. Float, 441 million. Now, on the good side, on the good side, there's 70% held by insiders. On the bad side, institutions own zero. W.H. Smith set to bring Toys R Us back to life. The brand generates two billion in global sales through fourteen hundred stores. I don't know. Um, there's a reason it's trading for under a penny. I would guess that it's completely shorted. I would further guess that whatever this new deal is is not inside of the company. Maybe it is, uh, but shareholders are crammed down i would bet there's debt in there let me see how much debt if it says oh this is tedious let me see how much debt there is profit margin minus a hundred percent Revenue 32 million, quarterly revenue negative 32%, no profit, 
no in, in negative income, 1.8 million in cash, 25 million in debt, negative cash flow, levered free cash flow, negative. You want to know what I think of it as an investment? Terrible. As a toy store, fantastic. I do think, Dave M., that the S&P 500 is going to go up 30% from here, 40%. Um, I think we're going to have a blow off to the upside in the stock markets as advisors start giving up on the bearish take that we were going to have a crash. It's going to soar. It has no reality with the economic background, but that's what I think is coming. After that, at some point, I think we're going to see, Dave M., a collapse in the financial markets, a collapse in the U.S. standing in the world greater than happened in the Great Depression. And I think the whole thing I've been trying to do here is try to see if people could make a little bit of money and get prepared for that. Hell is coming for breakfast. I hope it's five years from now, but it could be next year. Oh, gosh. That's the problem with painting. That is the problem with painting. Yeah, thank you, Steve F. Um, you are great at painting. Candy said, yes, she's your girl. Yay! 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 Can logic go to zero? Sure. Uh, temporarily, it can go to zero, uh, RW. I don't know where, I, I don't have my quote machine, my quotes on, but I think its bid is two cents and the ask is two and a half cents. And yes, they can, they can do anything. They can drive it down to essentially zero. But RW announced, I'm not going to go locate it, a year ago, announced in the spring last year, announced in the summer, announced almost before the DSPAC, discussed in interviews. Logic distributed data logic. Logic distributed data logic to Aubrey SPAC. Data logic was valued at 114 million on the low end by third party evaluator. That was 10 or $11 a share at that time. Aubrey SPAC, Aubrey Advisors, I believe, led a, a short raid on their own product because they got their money out. Doesn't matter. They put data logic into CAUD. Announced a year ago in public uh, filings. Nine months ago, six months ago, three months ago. Logic announced that at the same time,
they were going to do a reverse merger. What is a reverse merger, RW? A reverse merger is a private company rolling into a, a public shell, which is current on its filings, which is pristine in its filings, and has a certain number of investors and shareholders. Hopefully, it can be listed on the NASDAQ or higher. Now, Logic made a deal over a year ago with a Privco that was worth $250 million. It's in all the, it's in all the news. There were 50 million shares of Logic out at that time. That was worth 40, 50, 60 cents a share. Brent let that deal expire because he had better deals. Bigger deals. Otherwise, he wouldn't have let it go. Brent said on, on, this, on this venue that several 600, 700, 800 million and higher companies came to him wanting his, his, his shell. Now, where you where you can have a legitimate concern is this reverse merger was supposed to happen at the DSPAC. But I think Aubrey's advisors set this up for failure. Either, I don't think it was incompetence. I think it was on purpose. And that delayed everything. Should it have? I don't know, but it did. We're now three months advanced from the DSPAC. I'm telling you that Logic is working on a reverse merger candidate bigger than the one a year ago. I understand that it's worth 40, 50, 60 cents a share. Could it be less? I have no idea for sure. They're working on it. I believe it's going to be announced within two weeks. Now, RW. Could they, could that company suddenly decide we don't want to do it? Could Brent decide, you know what? I'm going to screw the shareholders. I'm not going to do a reverse merger. I'm just going to put this uh, uh, shell company on the shelf. I'm going to do nothing with it. Screw the shareholders. Could he do that? And it could go to zero? Sure, sure. But you know who, who's the largest, one of the largest anyway, shareholders of Logic? Do you know who is? I'll, I'll give you a moment to think of it. It's the CEO, Brent Sun. It's in his interest to find a reverse merger candidate that works. They've been working on it now for weeks, for, for months. Could it go to zero? Sure. Sure, RW. Logic's going to go to zero. I think you, I, I'm not. I'm being sarcastic. Just get out at two cents and move on. Life, unfortunately, is full of delays. And in the case of Logic, there, I think there's a lot of naked shorting and counterfeiting. And I think Aubrey advisors screwed the pooch. But I, I don't know what else to say to you, RW. You can go to the filings. You can go to the massive 160-page document that was put out there by the SEC, that was given to the SEC. It's public record. And you can read the strategy and the plan for logic. Why the hell would logic do a reverse merger at zero cents a share?
My understanding is there's more than one company interested in this shell. Now, I will tell you, I have been able to source shells. And I brought them to a client and he, he just went a different direction. I found a shell, for example, clean, ostensibly worth to acquire, it, it wasn't much money to acquire it. So in that sense, you're right. Could it be fractional? But RW, the company that he turned down, let expire, was worth a quarter of a billion dollars. Why did he let that go? Because he had better companies. He said here that he's dealing with, my memory was 25 companies came to him. I could be wrong, but that's my memory. So it's bigger than 250 million. He said that he's talking to companies over 800 million, 600, 700, 800 million. It's bigger than 250. I just did the arithmetic based off of 400 million. They're working on it. They can't say anything. He can't put out a press re release. Hey guys, I'm working on it. He can't do that. He's not allowed to. So we have to wait and the criminals sell and sell and sell. And now the shares have a bid of two cents and ask of almost three cents. A close of two and a half cents. Can it go to zero? Yes, RW, it can go to zero. Uh, RW, uh, uh, two days ago, three days ago, Holo, H O L O, ran. Holo ran. Anyway, RW, I get it. None, none of these, none of these uh, RW are going to squeeze. None, zero. Every stock that we've talked about is going to go to zero. Thanks for joining. Yeah, Holo squeezed last week. All right, BT. Anyway, I've gotten to the bottom. Um, I'm going to go walk my dog. Um, I'm sorry things don't happen more quickly. I'm sorry waiting causes a lot of doubt. And any, any company, any share, anything can happen. And I'm sorry there's not a normal stock market anymore. I'm sorry Gary Gensler is a mouse, not a man. I'm sorry, Adina Friedman is just a placeholder because she's a woman and she's promoted beyond her abilities. And I'm sorry that Robert Cook can't fit into the suits he wore five years ago and is just there to protect the, the big players. And I'm sa sorry, Cromwell Crawwell over at OTC Markets is such a loser all of this, in my opinion. I'm sorry broker-dealers don't enforce settlement. I'm sorry that these guys with slicked up uh, websites and, and suits and cigars, con CEOs, I'm sorry for all that. But, but there are squeezes. There, there, there is progress. I don't know what else to do. So you can buy one of the seven stocks that always go up until they don't. You can put your money in the bank until it fails. You can listen to CNN and Rachel Maddow through till the end, or you can start trying to take some steps. I don't know what else to tell you. RW, my, what I would recommend, 
uh, if you don't trust any of this, which I can understand that, just liquidate. Put all the capital you can stand to into physical silver and then just go about your life. Don't watch the stock market. Don't look for squeezes. Don't invest in any companies. Just buy silver. Maybe buy an income ETF or an income two or three stocks and just wait for silver to give you all your money back and much more. All right, so I'm going to go. Um, I love Candy being your girl. That is often awesome. I love that. So let's hope. Let's close on that good note. Let me find that. Let me find that. Can't find it. There it is. Let's close on that good note because that's where real wealth is. That's where real happiness is. I'm sorry that all these stories are so obsessive. Of when when they're going against us, I I just I don't I can't change it I I can't change the markets. So um, I'm going to wish everyone peace, love and happiness, including R W, including that other guy, including that guy, and um, uh, I I I do encourage you to tune in in 40 minutes to. Um, uh, uh, not legal advice with Curtis. You'll have a much better experience than you have here. And uh, hopefully he puts you in a good mood and can give you some insight that is profitable for you. And um, uh, I would just ask that everyone, if they think about it, praise for peace, peace. Praise for peace and pray worldwide and maybe for the children. And I'll leave it at that. Let me check. Somebody said something. Okay. All right. So blessings to Steve and Candy. I'm jealous. I will admit I'm jealous. But happy but in a happy way, not a negative way. All right. We'll catch you on the road, down the road, I probably Monday. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm waiting for it to end. You're not my mother, though you pretend to be. How does it go? There it is. Species, you're not my mother. It's a little Battery kid. Seventy percent. It's a little kid. To do. Bill's it's a little kid doing this with her. Human, oh. my my doggy. You're just so dum 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 dum. You're not my mother, though you claim to be. Don't call me. It's really creepy, don't you understand? We're different species. You are a human, and I'm a doggy. You're just so dum 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 dum. dum, dum. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna leave it at that. Hopefully, that's more upbeat than how I was just a minute ago. All right, so uh, all right, I'm gonna sign off. All right.